A very good evening and welcome to Sophia Gardens here on BBC Sport Online from BBC Sport Wales and BBC Sussex. Welcome along wherever you are listening or viewing for this match. We're on the county websites as well. So you're very welcome and uh, the weather is somewhat overcast but it's nice and dry. And uh, the news is that Sussex have won the toss and chosen to bat first. And uh, Glamorgan make one change. They bring in Andrew Salter for Billy Root. And Sussex make two changes. Tamal Mills is restored after missing the win over Gloucestershire last night in Bristol. So is Finn hudson Prentice, And out go George Garton and Henry Crocombe. Glamorgan with five wins, six defeats. Sussex with four wins and seven defeats. The visitors realistically can't qualify for the knockout stages and Glamorgan are at the stage where they have to win all three games to stand any decent chance. So Tom Clark and Harrison Wards coming out to bat in the blue shirts, bright blue shirts of Sussex. A word from James Harris and then commentary with Kenneth Davis. Thanks Nick. Uh, good evening everybody. Uh, it is, it's a must win game tonight for Glamorgan. Uh, it's been a tough week so far with with a trip to the Oval and then back for, for Wednesday night at home against Somerset. But last three games, Glamorgan need to win all three to give themselves a chance um, and possibly hope some results and some net run red go their way uh, in the next few games. And so Tim van der Huchten, who's been uh, probably more prominent with a bat uh, of late, uh, top score 48 on Wednesday night against Somerset when uh, Glamorgan were under the cosh. They were 50 odd for five at one stage but uh, pushed on to 170 uh, it wasn't enough as uh, Somerset top order hit enough runs but uh, Tim Van Hoogden will start right arm over from the tough end here he comes the first ball of this match and it's full and it's chipped in uh, slightly aerial through mid wicket and they'll collect a couple, if uh, not a full complement. No, it stopped right on the far boundary, and they come round back for three. Just chipped into mid-wicket. It was in the air for a time being. There wasn't a catching opportunity. And so Ward is off the mark. Do you know what? Both batsmen nearly collided there as well. They Coming did. back to the third, that would have been a, a slightly calamitous start from Sussex. So Tim van der Hoogte, probably uh, more expensive than he would have liked in this competition so far. Here he comes past the umpire, and that's a good length ball, but just tucked into the leg side, and they come through <laughs> to the signal. That's a big overthrow above Chris Cook, but... Uh, Spot the wicketkeeper throwing. <laughs> yes, which uh, is the New Zealander, Cameron Fletcher. This is third game since uh, joining on a short-term contract. The uh, Canterbury product, but he's been playing in the Bradford League and sent an SOS. So this is Tim Manahuchten. That's a good length delivery into the offside. And there should be two here. And it is an easy two for these pair, Ward and Clark. Glamorgan, of course, uh, victors in the corresponding fixture down at Hove earlier in the month by 32 runs. And... Uh, that partly due to the Ingram Cook partnership. Unfortunately, that's been broken up due to Colin Ingram's injury. So Tim van der Hoogten wheels round from the Taff end in past the umpire and charging into the offside. And it's uh, fielded at a uh, backward point, but uh, that was a bit streaky that time. It was. I think he was aiming something more sort of straight down the ground, but he's sort of caught a thick outside edge and gone out to deep point. Um, it feels like it's been a tough tough year for the bowlers, to be perfectly honest. There's been a lot of really high scores this year in the blast, and, and the seamers tend to, to cop a lot of that flak. Yeah, Glamorgan probably about 30 shy, 40 perhaps of where they wanted to be as uh, Tim Manor hooked in. That's the best ball so far this over. It's just padded down and fielded by the bowler himself uh, against Somerset, a team of, of that uh, standing in terms of their batting, Banton, and uh, although there was a drop catch early on which uh, they um, would rule that opportunity. Tim Van Hoogten will complete his over then, the first 
of this T20 blast competition that's uh, flicked away on the leg side and it'll go behind square for four so disappointing end to what was a tight over before then yeah that's a real shame to concede a boundary off off the last ball of the over is something you really desperately try not to do uh, certainly first up in this power play where you know the batsmen are, are looking for boundaries uh, it was a pretty good start from tim you know not conceding a boundary to that point but uh, but that just gives the first over to sussex there with um, with the boundary at the end so ward is six clark five not out uh, sussex after the first over 11 for none ward was the sussex top scorer last night in bristol hit 51 off 27 balls and it'll be jamie mcelroy to open up from this uh, cathedral road and running away from us here on BBC Sport Wales and BBC Sussex. As McElroy is in to bowl to Ward, up in the block hole and chipped on the leg side just wide of mid wicket. Single taken. James, since last year on air, you've had a, a couple of days outing with the second 11. How did that go? Yeah, pretty good. A couple of days at Abergavenny uh, just to get the red ball back in our hand before, uh, before another red ball four day game uh, starting here at Savai Gardens on Sunday which was a game won by Glamorgan seconds against Sussex again by uh, eight wickets as McElroy bowls and oh, that's nudge just past the keeper it's running away for four runs Clark I don't think meant to play it that fine but it was safe enough with no slip in and ran away oh, I was certainly could have done with a the slip there the uh, Glamorgan started with a slip in that first over, certainly the first few balls for, for Timmy van der Guten, but didn't have one in there for Jamie McElroy, but um, real shame as I think that would have gone straight down first slip throw. 16 for Nort, Sussex in this second over as McElroy bowls and uh, that's cramped Clark up a little bit and he's uh, played it on the onside, no run. Just the one left-handed Tom in the uh, Sussex top order today. Quite often field Clark, Alsop and Haynes are all left-handed Toms. Harrison Ward, Ollie Carter will probably come in next. Ravi Bapara. As that's a play and a miss by Clark. Throwing the kitchen sink at that. I think it went between leg stump and the batter and Chris Cook took it going down leg side. Really good bowling from Jamie McElroy. Um, he's been extracting some swing for the first few balls of his, of his over, which... Um, which has been such an advantage for him, really, and one of the reasons why he's done so well opening up with this new ball. I think he just tried to run that one back in into the left-hander and, and got a play a miss out of him. In comes McElroy again to bowl to Clark. That's on leg side. It's just wide of Salter at square leg. It's gone away for six. It wasn't a great ball, but if he'd hit it just that little bit squarer, it would have been straight to Salter on the ropes there. Yeah, it would have. And me talking about Jamie McElroy's swing, that was just one. He looked to try and swing from a little bit too straight, pushed it in too close to the leg stump. It didn't swing and it was easy pickings, really, for the, for the batsman behind square. So Sussex 22 without loss in the second over as the sun comes out and uh, a better comeback from McElroy as Clark nudges one back down the pitch to him, dot ball. So 11 off that over as well. Sussex 22 for North after two, having chosen to bat first, um, probably because it's a, a used pitch, do you think, James? Yeah, you'd say so. Um, certainly this is the same wicket that, that was used on Wednesday. Um, obviously Glamorgan getting a score that was slightly under par and, and in the end easily chased down by, uh, by Somerset so they'll be looking to get first use out of it tonight and, and try and put a decent score on the board we know the wickets have been pretty good here all summer so far and the T20 wickets particularly have been really high scoring so they'll be looking to put a big score on here Tim Van Hoogten with five wickets so far in the competition continues and that's chipped to uh, mid on and it's an easy catch for Smale and Tim van der Huchten strikes. So Ward has gone for seven. And it was just, it just cramped him up a bit. It's good length ball. And it was chipped and an easy catch for Will Smale at mid on. Yeah, Tim's just changed the angle there to start this, or to start his second over nicely coming around the wicket. Uh, just speared it sort of into the top of, of middle and leg stump. The batsman probably trying to turn it two square through, through square leg. Uh, has managed to get a leading edge straight to mid on so 
Really good start for Glamorgan, nearly wickets uh, are what's required in this power play and that's a great start from, from the boys and from Tim there. Which brings Ollie Carter to the crease. As we yeah, just, just got it all wrong, did uh, Tom Clark. Ollie Carter, 21 year old, an academy player. So a bit of pressure here. And uh, Tim Van Huchten from the Taff end coming over the wicket to the right handed batsman. Van Huchten, good length ball, and that's just pushed into the offside. There's no run. Got a big centre in the championship against Glamorgan. Was it last year, James? Were you playing in that one? I think it was. Was that here? Was yeah, that I think it was. yeah, it was. Yeah, he did play well. So they have put that slip back in now. Where a chance, well, there would have been a, a chance in the previous over. Mid on, mid off, cover, mid wicket, fine leg, short third man as uh, Van Huchten comes in past the umpire, bangs one in and uh, it's pulled but not uh, cleanly, just goes to mid on and there's no run. Good over here, just trying to pile some pressure on, just the two permitted outside the 30 in the batting power play. So. Uh, there is cloud cover in uh, the capital, but the uh, sun piercing through as Van der Hoekten comes in. Fuller that time, and uh, that's driven nicely over Van der Hoekten for four. Just a little bit full there from, from Timmy van der Guten. I mean, after two dot balls, you always feel like something's going to happen on the third. That's where the batters then generally tend to get really, really edgy and a little bit frenetic. You can often expect a big shot. Uh, Ollie Carr has managed to, to hit it straight over Tim's head, straight over the umpire and, and a couple of bounces down for four. 26 for one. Two balls remaining of the third over. Goes for the paddle. This should be caught. That fine leg it is. And it was an easy one in the end. Carter got it all wrong. Went for the ramp shot. But the execution wasn't there. And it was caught easily so at uh, fine leg by James McElroy. Yeah, really important wickets. Good bowling from Tim. Um, to be fair, not the worst batting in the world. Um, third man and fine leg up inside the circle, trying to ramp it over over the wicket keeper in short 45, but um, didn't execute it particularly well. Managed to get it probably a little bit high on the bat and just looped up nicely for an easy catch at, at short 45 for Jamie McElroy. So a second for Van der Hoekden. 26 for two, Sussex under a bit of pressure. One ball left of the third, which brings uh, the captain and experienced Ravi Bopara to the crease. Played against Glamorgan in the corresponding fixture. Mix, missed the <laughs> one previous because he was caught in uh, a traffic jam on the south coast. Uh, it was the M27, Ken, so we've got to navigate that next <laughs> week. So let's not take the mick out of him too no, much. No, no, we'll leave him plenty of time, Nick, as Van der Hoekden. Aiming for a third, and uh, great ball, and Bopara just flirted with that outside off stump, which brings to an end a very profitable over for Glamorgan. The fall of Ollie Carter, and uh, Sussex under a bit of pressure, 26 for two. Great early wickets, two wickets in that over. Give the, gives the, the early sort of advantage to Glamorgan here. Um, this is a big partnership now that we know the power and the skill of Ravi Bapara and he's the big wicket in this this Sussex top order that, that Glamorgan need to take um, if they're going to restrict Sussex here to a, to a below par score. It is Rory Smith to bowl the fourth over of the game from this Cathedral Road end. Glamorgan have often gone with two each from Van der Hochten, McElroy and Smith in the power play. As he lobs that one over mid wicket, Tom Clark for four runs. Once you've cleared the infield, it's pretty risk free there. It's a fine shot that from Tom Clark, really controlled batting. Rory Smith ran in, hit the wicket probably in a, at a length that he would have been trying to, um, and the batsman has just picked it up over the leg side for an easy boundary. Clark moves on to 19, not out, and Sussex to 30 for two. Smith is in again. Down leg side, that'll be a wide. 
as he looked to pull it away Tom Clark this season's competition 223 runs at 20.3 coming into today strike rate of 133 Bapara similar 135 similar also for Shadab Khan who's uh, due in next the Pakistan all-rounder Smith in to Clark driven straight to short cover and there's no run it's a uh, decent crowd tonight six and a half thousand was one uh, figure mentioned there are plenty of school children in the uh, the jellyfish stand away to our left and thankfully no one playing at the principality stadium tonight after the uh, traffic chaos we've had on a couple of Wednesday matches Smith in to bowl and an edge for four by Clark through third man it flies probably would have gone over the top of slip and uh, Sussex picking up a rather fortuitous four yeah it's tough work bowling in this power play balls off the middle of the bat go to the boundary and invariably balls off the edge of the bat tend to go to the boundary as well when you've got to have so many fielders inside the circle good bowling from Rory Smith uh, just a bit unlucky from from his side and, and a bit of good fortune for Tom Clark Clark moves on to 23 as his captain Bapara watches from the non-striker's end and Clark chops that one down to third man this time it will roll straight to van der Hochten and just the single taken 36 for two in this fourth over it's closer play in the women's test at Trent Bridge England finished on 218 for two in reply to Australia's 473 all out after day two of five the women playing a five day this time Tammy Beaumont is a hundred not out and that's Siva Brunt is 41 not out Heather Knight formerly of Cardiff University made 57 for England as Smith is in to bowl to Paparo swings and misses outside off stump and the Australian innings well Annabelle Sutherland finished on 137 not out to get plenty of runs out of the lower order and Sophie Eccleston got 5 for 129 and it's the first time an England spinner has taken five wickets in the first innings of a home test for England but having said which tests in the women's game are a few and far between that's the only one against Australia this year as Papara tries to ramp and misses and through it goes to uh, Chris Cook uh, Ravi Papara not quite got his eye in as yet a bit adventurous from Ravi you don't often see him get the scoop out early tried to ramp one there over over short 45 but missed it completely the ball went through to Chris Cook and look I think we're all going to be pretty happy with this start we've gone through a few boundaries yes but two early wickets if we can pick up one more here from a from a Glamorgan perspective I'm sure they'll be quite happy with that power play and try and restrict Sussex to to as few as we can in these next couple of overs before we can relax some of the field restrictions 10 coming from that fourth over and Glamorgan keeping faith with uh, Timmy van der Hoogten and that's driven and caught at mid-off it's as easy as that Rory Smith well he won't take an easier catch and Clark falls it's the third for Timmy van der Hoogten who's on fire well he's been on fire for most of the summer so far to be fair to him uh, the championship form has been excellent bat and ball certainly batting wise he's been on great form in this t20 blast so far the bowling so far in the competition probably hasn't quite gone his way but three early wickets now uh, for Glamorgan and three early wickets for Tim will will really make him a lot happier uh, ball in all honesty, all honesty that was probably a little bit fuller than he would have liked uh, I think he actually ran his fingers down the side to give him some credit and deceive the batsman who only managed to chip the ball to mid off yeah I don't think uh, Tom Clark will want to see the uh, replay there although uh, a bit of variation by uh, Van der Hoogten and uh, Sussex in all sorts of trouble in the fifth 36 for three which brings uh, shut up Khan to the crease not very often you see Glamorgan bowling someone three overs in a row very rarely I mean it's it's not something that's done very often at all I wouldn't say in, in said it, didn't, didn't they the, over the to the four yeah uh, Van der Hoogten comes in he's got a ta his tail up now three wickets and that's a dot ball 
to Shadab Khan. Yeah, it was something that hugely unusual, isn't it? Overton bowled all four and Brooks uh, three, so yeah. he didn't get a change until the eighth over. That wouldn't have happened many times in T20 cricket, no. I wouldn't imagine. No. It's certainly the last few years. Tim Banahochten wheels round from the taff end with three wickets to his name, past the umpire. Bangs that one in, and it's a good length ball into the offside. There's no run. And Glamorgan know they need, or they need to win all three. And even then, they are relying on other results because... Uh, Hampshire and Kent's net run rate is better than uh, Glamorgan's. Glamorgan play Hampshire next Friday and uh, the following Sunday will round off the campaign against Middlesex unless, of course, they go through to the last eight. A swing and again it goes uh, short. There was a shy at the stamps. Oh. It's ricocheted and unfortunately they'll pick up an overthrow here at Will Sussex and they get to 37. got his eye in Tim van der Huchten and it's uh, batting is difficult for Sussex and Ravi Bopala at the moment it is it doesn't look too easy I mean this is a tricky situation I suppose three down so early inside the fifth you really want to take advantage as power players a batting team but both these batsmen will know now that that one more wicket really does give give all the advantage to Glamorgan 7.9 the run rates at present as Tim van der Huchten ambles in bowls and that's a good length ball once more really on the mark is Timmy van der Huchten and this is a cracking over from Glamorgan's point of view James Harris myself and Nick Webb on uh, BBC Sport Online and we will be on BBC Radio World Sport as well during the course of the Evening, good crowd here. Six and a half thousand into Sapphire Gardens. Tim Van der hooked in, and that's slashed Ooh. past the man at point, and uh, it evades the fielder, fielder, and will go all the way over the boundary for four. Disappointing again to go for a boundary of the last ball, the over. But um, I think Timmy Van der Hoogden will be very, very happy with his work there in, in getting his those three wickets in those three overs, and really giving the impetus early to Glamorgan. Yeah, it's something that we haven't been able to say that often in the last couple of weeks after that uh, fabulous start to the campaign for Glamorgan, winning four out of the first five games, but uh, injuries have taken their toll with Ed Byram and Colin Ingram dropping out. McElroy then to bowl his second over from... Uh, this Cathedral Road and the last of the power play. And he comes to bowl to Shadab Khan, who defends that one or just pushes it up to Smith at mid on. And it's a single by agreement. 42 for three. Peter Zoglu in the field, still tossing the ball <laughs> frantically from <laughs> one hand to another. It's just such a bizarre trait, isn't it? In comes McElroy then to Bapara on four not out and uh, he works that one down towards short fine leg. Single taken, 43 for three. Signs that these two uh, prepared to push it around a, a little bit to rebuild. Possibly, I think they feel like they have to. Um, both of them being in so early, having lost three wickets. From a Glamorgan perspective, a lot of cutters we've seen so far, certainly the last ten balls or so that they've bowled. In comes McElroy again, bowls, and that's on the legs of Shut Up and worked down to fine leg for a single. Is a shy at the stumps at the uh, non striker's end that's well backed up at 44 for three. Thoughts on, on the pitch? I mean, it's the, I think the third game that's being played on this. I think that's what's, what's driven Sussex to, to bat first, thinking it might even get worse for the evening, and you're seeing that now with the cutters that we're all going to bowl in. McElroy in, balls, and is that caught behind by Chris Cook? It is, that is a quite brilliant catch from Cook. Papara has gone, he stood for a moment, whether in disbelief at the catch or the decision, I'm not sure, but there was a deflection, and Cook took it absolutely superbly, 44 for four. Chris Cook rolling back the ears, brilliant diving catch, 
slightly down the leg side from Jamie McElroy, but straight off the face of the bat by the looks of things from from Ravi Bapara. He couldn't believe that he's managed to to nick that straight through to the keeper down the leg side. But Chris Cook with a fabulous diving catch and a really, really important wicket for Glamorgan. Ravi's uh, a fabulous player and he holds these this innings together for Sussex now so often. So to see the back of him is a, gives Glamorgan a massive advantage in this power play and Sussex fall down. Yeah, it was definitely off the bat, wasn't it? Uh, it was pre presumably the brilliance of the catch that uh, led Papara to uh, stand and stare for a moment. How on earth have I got out that way? Just the disbelief, I think, in yeah, his face yeah. that he'd managed to get himself out. Just like that. He looked like he was being quite circumspect, trying to make sure he got himself in. But a little bit of brilliance from Chris Cook has, has seen the back of him. Well... Maybe 37 years old, but he's still diving around as uh, as well as ever. Chris Cook, a man who didn't even keep wicket for the first part of his first-class career, as McElroy bowls to Burgess, the Sussex keeper, and he plays his first ball straight to cover, and uh, there's no run. So, for Sussex listeners, I'm afraid it's been a torrid night so far, but as I say, it is a used pitch, so... You know, you don't know what a decent score is until both teams have batted on it. It could be a 120 to 140 situation. As uh, that's run down wide of third man by Burgess. He'll get off the mark with a couple of runs as uh, Salter runs round from backward point and fields on the third man boundary. 46 for four. But that is the end of the power play. An advantage for Morgan, it must be said, in that power play. Four down, four early wickets, which gives them the advantage. And we're going to have a little bit of Andy Gorvin now, who looks like he's going to come on. Chris Coates coming up to the stumps. And Glen Morgan look to try and put some pressure on here, make sure they don't leak any easy runs and make the Sussex batsmen keep hitting, I suppose, and, and try and take another couple of wickets if they can. Yeah, and just take the pace of it with uh, a few off-cutters. Andy Gorvin and... Shut up. Khan taking guard. Here comes Gorvin for his first uh, ball of uh, uh, the tough end. That's just, uh, well, dribbled past him. He tried to field, but it's a single. Burgess uh, scored 45 against Glamorgan at Hove. So he can bat. But 47 for four at the present. 46 for four at the end of the power play. Glamorgan well on top as uh, Gorvin comes in past the umpire. Bowls, that's uh, pulled, but it'll only be a single to the deep square boundary. And it is a used pitch, as we said, but it still looks pretty good from here. I mean, the ball's come on pretty nicely. The batsmen have hit some, some good shots in between losing, losing the wickets that they have done. So it might not necessarily be a 200 pitch, but um, it's, still, it's still a pretty good surface by the looks. Andy Gorvin. And that's banged in, good length, and uh, fielded by Gorvin himself, and there's no run. Glamorgan have just been shy of 30-ish runs in a few games, which might have made a bit of difference in terms of building pressure against their op opposition as Gorvin comes in once more. Ball slower that time. <laughs> and uh, just deceiving shout up Khan. We look at the replay. Definitely slow ball. And <laughs> shut up, Khan through the shot. Well, just on that blue marker, which uh, in usually indi indicates a wide, not called. As uh, Gorvin comes in. Again, slower ball. Again, it's just dabbed back to Andy Gorvin. Good over this. Good opening over from uh, Andy Gorvin. It's been a different. Uh, we spoke briefly with an iron uh, regarding umpires calls on wides this season I think they're starting to feel a bit sorry for the bowlers <laughs> if I'm really honest with some of the carnage we've seen around the country we had 500 runs in the games last night at the Oval this is the final ball of the over bit leg side that <laughs> time but it's fielded at fine leg well fielded by McElroy straight fired back in at the keeper and again a cracking over 
from Andy Gorvin. Yeah, Andy Gorvin's probably got away with a couple of balls there that he didn't quite mean to bowl. One short, one a little bit wide. Just the two coming off it. But in Fugger Morgan's point of view, a very good over. New style Andy Gorvin, he's running in now slightly differently to where he did at the start of the year. He's been working on his white ball bowling, trying to cover it up with his non-bowling hand and, and use some different grips and not give any sort of tell to the to the batsman about what's coming and, until as late as he possibly can. He's very much uh, the wicket to wicket bowler, as they say, isn't he? Hasn't maybe got the, the express pace, but uh, a s smallish sort of chap, but uh, certainly looking to develop the skills, as James says, as Peter Hatzoglu bowls his first delivery. It's dropped on the leg side by Burgess, and they'll go through for a single. Burgess in his second spell with Sussex, back from Warwickshire, averaging 20 in the comp this year. Strike rate of 1-2-2. Two, two. That's a glue. 14 wickets, second for Glamorgan behind Jamie McElroy. As uh, that's played out on the offside by Shadab Khan and he wanted a single. Burgess definitely didn't. If you'd said at the start of the season that Morgan's leading wicket takers in this would be uh, McElroy and Hatzoglu. Ma McElroy had pl played, I think, two T20 games before this season, and Hatzoglu wasn't even on this on the radar. As that's played on the leg side by Shadup, they might look for a second, but uh, good aggressive approach from Cameron Fletcher, and he's up to what 17 wickets, McElroy. Yeah, 17 now. Hatzoglu on 14. That's the beauty of this competition, I suppose. It can it can throw at some people. You know, you wouldn't have named this Glamorgan eleven, I'm sure, at the start of the year if you said that this would be a team who would play one of the games in the competition. Well, Smale in the past has probably played just as much for Gloucester as Glamorgan and a bit for Somerset. As that's driven through the offside by Burgess, but he'll pick up the uh, sweeper on the cover boundary, and it is just the single. 51 for four. Sussex just ticking along, not knowing whether to uh, try and rebuild. You get the feeling that they're, they're looking to knock it around for a few overs and get a few six, seven, eight overs before they bring out more big shots as that's played on the leg side by Shadab. There could be two here. Not quite the, the batters on the same radar there. No, it didn't seem like Michael Burgess really fancied that two at all. Shadab Khan who is desperate to try and get back for it, but um, it looks like Burgess fancies the, the spin of Pete Hatzoglu a bit more. Shadab's probably more impressed with the, uh, the ball rather than the bat. Ten wickets. Batting average of just 17 coming into this. As that's pulled away on the leg side by Burgess. Single taken. Out to Fletcher at mid-wicket. And... Uh, it is 53 for four at the end of eight overs. So five off Gorvin's, uh, oh, had to lose first over rather. 53 for four off eight. Tom Clark, 24, the only man in double figures. Tim van der Hochten with three wickets for Glamorgan out of the four. Yeah, advantage Glamorgan. Still glad Sussex just going at 6.6 .6 and over. Off the first eight. Uh, we're going to get some more spin here with Mr. Andrew Salter coming into the attack. The only change in the Glamorgan lineup, Andrew Salter in for Billy Root, and here comes Salter with his first ball, fullish, and uh, that is scooped away on the leg side, just single through mid wicket. So the men out: Harrison Ward, Tom Clark, Ollie Carter, and Ravi Bopara. Three wickets for Tim Van Huchten. And the other coming for Mr. Dependable, Jamie McElroy, as uh, a foolish delivery. It's in the air. There are two men out. And now oh, it's been dropped. It's been dropped by Sam Northeast. There was a bit of miscommunication, I think. Well, there were two out there. The man coming, Northeast, was coming from long on. And it should have been taken. Jamie McElroy, the other. Just never got it clear between them. It didn't look about who was actually going to go for that catch. So the miscommunication, and Glamorgan will hope that doesn't cost them dear in the course of this match. Salter, and a uh, good ball out, pushes it out to the cover. There's no run. 
it's got to be one thing that Morgan will be disappointed with I think so far in this competition is the amount of catches that's gone down in the outfield yeah one went down on Wednesday night Billy Root who's uh, well that's why he's out on the boundary such a good field there. I think he misjudged it on Wednesday tried to jump where he didn't have to the ball was coming down to him that one just for a s m mini second Salter full mm. and that's a six straight slogged over long on long off rather Salter trying to put some flight on the ball and uh, Michael Burgess did the rest <coughs> Shadab uh, Khan rather is on strike and uh, Salter trying to tuck him up, and but he manages to squeeze one out too long on. And that is end of over. So after what has been a near faultless start for Glamorgan, uh, a blot on the copybook because there should have been a fifth wicket. Yeah, nicely bowled over from Andrew Salter. <laughs> Dragged the mistake out of the batsman. Uh, catch dropped on the boundary and then unfortunately went for a for a six at the end of that over there which he which he probably didn't deserve did, he did should have got the wicket some north east think that uh, McElroy is coming uh, round from deep mid wickets I think so when you've got two fielders running towards each other and this is great communication you always feel a little bit worried at the corner of your eye that that field is also going for it or may even run into yeah. you as Gorvin legs pumping runs away from a cathedral road end and uh, beats shut up outside off stump Chris Cook takes chest high and whips off the bales in one movement so there was an incident down in Sussex a uh, couple of years ago with two players colliding wasn't it? and both hospitalized it's always a worry you always see it you know you see it quite often during the season really if you watch a lot of cricket but uh, communication is the key with those Glovin is in to bowl to Shadab who gets tucked up and uh, plays it gently up towards mid on Gorvin's after it but uh, Smith comes in off the boundary and gets there first I suppose it must be just a question of one of you having the confidence to say that's mine I can get to it and it, it almost doesn't matter which one it is as long as it's just one of you and that's the thing someone's got to shout loud and shout early and then go and take it Glovin bowls and uh, Burgess flicks it off his legs down towards backward square single taken 65 for four Burgess 8 off 8, Shadab 15 off 20 and uh, Andrew Salter should have have it, had him back in the dugouts not back in the pavilion because they don't often go there Gorvin bowls sliced through point by Shadab, single taken 66 for 4 so just a, a mini recovery now, 22 of these two have added to give Sussex uh, a little bit of hope for the second half of their innings Gorvin into bowl played gently in the offside by Burgess 67 for 4 not too many big shots apart from those uh, tried off Salter certainly not uh, at the moment having a go at uh, the seamers as Gorvin into Shadab and uh, he's driven that one straight up towards uh, Long on Smith does the fielding single taken halfway mark of the Sussex innings then just five again off uh, Andy Gorvin's over and they're 68 for four having lost uh, Clark for 24 Ward for seven Carter four Papara four three to Van der Hochten, one to McElroy Two good overs there from Andy Gorvin. Halfway through the innings, Sussex 68 for four. Uh, advantage Glamorgan, you'd have to say. They've bowled pretty well. They've taken most of their chances, apart from that one that went down in Andy Salter's last over. Uh, but they'd be really happy with their performance in the first half of this innings. And Andy Gorvin's pace more than anything, making life difficult for these pair to get it off the wicket. And uh, they're not pushing on at the moment. 68 for four at the halfway stage. Shadab uh, just... Uh, has uh, taken some replacement gloves and he's back taking guard as uh, Smith comes in from the 
taff end and that's just dug out into the offside for a single good crowd as uh, we mentioned sunshine out in the capital now and uh, no Harry Styles to contend with <laughs> uh, I'm glad to say this evening so uh, everybody's attention is here Rory Smith took the two wickets the only two in defeat against Somerset on Wednesday here he comes in ambles in from the taff end and charging down was Burgess but it's fielded by Kieran Carlson Simple plan here from Rory Smith by the looks of things. Just trying to bang away at a length. Four fielders out on the leg side. Uh, one on the offside at deep cover. Looks like he's just going to try and, and hit a length and, and make the Sussex batsmen try and make the play here. Make them try and take some risk. Wheels round. Here comes Smith. Bowls. And that's slashed on the offside by Burgess. But there's a man out deep in the covers for just a single there is a concert on actually this evening Ken is there at, at the castle Queens of the Stone yeah. Age Gosh, just that, that uh, pass me by Nick there that is there's been so <laughs> many of them it's probably about a tenth as, it, as it, many it, people as in the stadium it does the other mean that night. James and I can't park usually on our street <laughs> big bugbear as Smith comes in bowls dug in short that's uh, hooked not timed by Shadab there's a man out deep, but fine leg. Just a single, 71 for four. So uh, just a mini revival for the away side. Yeah, they're starting to build a little partnership. Thankfully, from a Glamorgan point of view, it's not going anywhere too quickly, but they'll still be desperate to, to take another wicket here and, and keep Sussex under pressure. Man has come in on the 45 at fine leg charging is Burgess and that's a fine shot through the covers for four best shot of the night for Sussex and Burgess is uh, is looking in good nick as he was down at Hove yeah Rory Smith just trying to get one into the block hole there he's probably sensing that Michael Burgess was going to come and do something to try and change the play he did he took a couple of steps down the wicket it's actually a full toss there and got it on the full toss yeah and smacked it through the covers for four so he gave that the treatment that it deserved uh, Michael Burgess. Smith tried to hit back instantly, charging. <laughs> Got himself in a bit of a muddle there, did Burgess. Went to hook, it ricocheted and went to the offside that is a single. I think Rory Smith saw him coming there again, bowled a little leg cutter, did him for the lack of pace. Michael Burgess took it on the body and jogged down the other end for a leg by. So eight coming from that over. The Sussex uh, need a bit more. Um, having lost four wickets, they're 76 for four after the 11th. It's hard to say what a good total would be yeah, here. I, was I think say. with um, with Somerset chasing down the score on on Wednesday night quite comfortably, um, it'll be hard here because it doesn't look quite as good a pitch. Um, so it'll be hard to say what a good score is. But nine overs left. They'll be looking at 150, I think, really. 76 for four then as uh, Hatsaglou starts his contortions and is in past the umpire and Burgess drives to long off. Single taken, 77 for four. It's all very controlled most of the time, this Sussex approach at the moment, isn't it? Just the, the one big shot and over. That's what kind of happens, I suppose, when you lose four early wickets. You kind of have to keep a few shots in the shed. That's our glue bowls, and uh, that one's noodled away to a gully, and uh, they go through for a single northeast. In fact, was back on the the edge of the circle. 78 for four, Shadab to 20. Been watching what Hatsaglou is able to do with the ball and hoping to replicate it, maybe. Oh, there's a big appeal for LPW as Burgess went for the reverse. Not out. Must have got outside the line. Yeah, just outside the uh, the off stump as we uh, have the benefit of a, a replay for video viewers. No commentary available on the Glamorgan website. As Hatsaglou bowls to Burgess. 
who just works it into the offside and jogs through for a single. Umpires this evening, James Middlebrook and Mike Burns. James will tell us which is which because I never tell umpires apart. Uh, Mike Burns is at the end being bowled now by Pete Hatziglou, I think. Dean Koska is the, uh, the other official, I know him, <laughs> as that's uh, pulled away on the uh, leg side by Shadab for a single. Glamorgan left arm spinner for many years. Mike Burns had the, the joy of being fourth umpire at the test match this week as well. I'm sure he had a, a pretty good seat to watch the cricket at Edgebaston. Yeah, remind me what fourth umpire does. <laughs> uh, take out the <laughs> second you ball, I think. <laughs> As uh, hats of glue bowls and uh, Burgess clips it down towards backwards square. They'll look at the possibility of a second, but Gorvin got his throw in quickly enough. And uh, just five again off the over. So Sussex not able to uh, put the foot down on the accelerator yet. Well, that, does that mean that Brenda down at Hove is the, uh, is the fourth umpire as well? Because uh, that seems to be her function. It's a really good question. I don't know what the fourth umpire does. <laughs> take out the second ball. I see him take out some drinks. <laughs> uh, probably, keep, probably keep up with the timings and the overrates and stuff, I'd suggest. There's a lot of people on, on, on hand to test matches. <laughs> Yes, a lot of volunteers for this series as uh, Salter comes in, should have had a wicket in his first, that's uh, pulled and it's uh, fielded at deep backward square for a single. Shadab uh, is on 21, Michael Burgess 18, so a loss rests on uh, this pair now if Sussex are going to pose a decent total here at Sophia Gardens. Salter bangs that one in. It's short of a length. And uh, it is stopped. But they will come through for a single. Carlson hurls it back at uh, Salter. The only change for Billy Root. Great conditions. The floodlights are on. Not needed in this light at the moment. Salter full. And that will be all the way for six. And just straying down leg. And it was given the treatment. Salter straying down leg and on the fall as well. Yeah, Andy Salter's looking probably not to give any flight or not to give too much flight to the batsman with the shorter boundary straight behind him down to the taff. Just drifted down leg a little bit and, and got picked up over square leg. And Salter uh, again, and that's pulled, and the man will field at long on. So, the news that uh, Mitchell Swepson will be arriving and will play this Sunday in the championship game as Salter bangs that one in short. That will go all the way once more. It's the second six of the over, which is proving to be an expensive one. Yeah, the Sussex batsmen have decided they need to put their foot down a little bit here. Andrew Salter just landing one on a length. Um, Shadab Khan rocked back and picks it up over straight mid wicket for six. Yeah, he's not going to miss out on those. And this is where it shows the drop catches and how much it costs you. Andrew Salter should have had a wicket, second or third ball, and has unfortunately gone for a few now. Here comes uh, Salter again, just straying down the leg side, but. Uh It'll be fielded. They'll come back for a second, though. And it's good running between uh, these pair. They've uh, definitely put the foot on the accelerator in that over. It's uh, 98 for four. So, what, 17 coming from that expensive over by uh, Andrew Salter. You still feel it's advantage for Morgan here, but this partnership is growing from a, from a Sussex perspective. Run rate's gone up to... Seven and a half and over now, and with seven overs left, they'll really be looking to put the foot down to, to try and build a, a score they can hopefully try and defend. So it'll be Andy Gorvin to bowl to Burgess on 25 not out. Shadab now the top scorer on 30. That should have gone earlier in his innings, or pretty early in his innings. Then there's the ramp coming out from Burgess and that will run away for four down towards fine leg with the fielder up in the circle 
And it's the 100 up for Sussex in the 14th over. But these two have now put on 58 for the fifth wicket and uh, pulling the, uh, the visitors back into the game. Gorvin in again past umpire Burns and uh, that's bowled him. It's gone through as Burgess tried to whip it on the leg side. He's simply missed a straight one and the leg stump is leaning back. Burgess goes for 29. Sussex 102 for four. Really good bowling from Andy Gorvin. Keeping the stumps in play. Making sure that if the batsman missed the ball, he'd be canning in, canning in into the stumps. And that's exactly what happened there. He's got really good figures so far tonight. And that's a big wicket there for Glamorgan as Michael Burgess was just looking to put the accelerator down. That's a wicket for Glamorgan to hopefully keep the Sussex Sharks in check. The voice of Glamorgan's James Harris here on BBC Sport Online from BBC Sport Wales and BBC Sussex. That, uh, that record for the, the dismissal of batsman, banana rama, na na na, hey hey, kiss him goodbye. I think if I were a batter walking out, I'd stick the bat through the nearest speaker with that one. Do you know what, you often don't remember or hear what's going on the speakers, it's quite interesting. Uh, you don't remember much about what's going on <laughs> the periphery, but um, yeah, that one, if, <laughs> if you caught it in your ear just as you were walking off and you... Yeah, you wouldn't be too happy. 102 for five. We're in the 14th over. Sounds like the Friday night crowd are starting to get uh, lubricated. The, the trumpeters on patrol in the grandstand. Trying to whip up a bit of enthusiasm. And uh, that wicket by Andy Gorvin. 102 for five has interrupted Sussex's recovery. James Coles is the new man, 102 runs at 17 as he lobs his first ball just over mid-wicket for a single up to Smith at long on, 103 for five. Andy Gorvin, who is half Welsh, I discovered the other day. Yeah. His dad's from Cumbran, born in Hampshire, played a bit in their academy, came through the Cardiff University system, but... We'll claim him as a taff. That's down leg side and it's heading towards the taff as Shadab has just glanced it away. Got a, a fraction of bat on it and it's run away for four. Yeah, bad ball from Andy Gorvin, unfortunately. Trying one of his little change up, probably a knuckle ball or something. Just drifting down leg side. Shadab Khan only had to get a little bit of bat on it. That's exactly what he did for another boundary. In comes Gorvin again to bowl to Shadab. That's a low full toss and it's hit straight to cover where it's misfielded by Carlson. Didn't know where the ball had gone for a moment and they've gone through for a single and that is another blow to Carlson's already battered left hand. Yeah, and you know what's worse? I got him in the hand in the nets at about 2.30 this afternoon <laughs> as we had a red ball net as well, uh, unfortunately. 108 for five. Gorvin in hooked away by Coles on the leg side hasn't quite found the gap Hatsa glue is onto it and keeps them down to a single despite that being one of the, the longer boundaries 109 for 5 then so uh, 11 off the over but also the wicket of Burgess for 29 Shadab is 35 Coles is 2 109 for 5 6 overs to go some nice tidy figures from Andy Gorvin 3 overs for 18 uh, despite those two boundaries in that over Sussex run rates just building a bit more now, creep, trying to creep up towards that eight and over mark. Uh, with six overs to go, Shadab Khan is the key really for them. If, if he can bat most of the way through this innings and, and keep striking the ball well, they could get up to sort of 150, 160. Uh, from Glamorgan's point of view, they want to keep chipping away these wickets and, and Shadab's a big one now for, from their point of view. 24 year old, six tests and over 50 ODIs and uh, had a game to forget down in Hove didn't feature with a bat and was expensive bowling as well as Hatsoglu is coming in from the Taff end now from, he's been from the Cathedral Road end that's whipped away to uh, Deep Upward Square there's a single, 110 for 5 in the 15th Shadab 35, James Coles on 3 5.5 overs remaining. Hatsoglu, and that's swept. Oh. And it's a misfield, and it's a bad one by Tim van der Hochten. The man at fine leg, through his legs, and it goes for four. 
and uh, there'll be just a stare. <laughs> there'll be just a stare from uh, the Australian. Might have taken a nasty little bounce there, but fielding cost Ingram Morgan. A drop catch and a couple of misfields have definitely cost a, a few runs in this inning so far. Well, four, there shouldn't have been a run there. As Hatsoglu comes in and uh, it's just driven into the covers for a single. This is where Hatsoglu is going to forget about the previous ball. 115 for five. Here comes the Australian, and that's just uh, nonchalantly driven to long off. There's another single. So the the run rate has crept up. It's up to 7.9 now, with uh, just over five overs remaining. Five wickets in hand. <laughs> so this is the time they'll try and get going. That's all glue, fuller that time, and uh, <laughs> well, it was chopped and it uh, ended up, well, it could have uh, been dragged onto the wickets as it was, it was fielded by uh, the wicket keeper Chris Cook. If you're hearing uh, a few uh, over-exuberant fans. We've uh, turned them down a little, in case they... It's a it Friday boisterous. night crowd, you know, <laughs> the, the weekend is upon us. Good crowd, about six, six and a half thousand here at uh, Safari Gardens in a must-win game for Glamorgan as uh, Peter Hatsoglu comes in full delivery and that's uh, worked away to the leg side there's a single so that is the end of the Australian Peter Hatsoglu's over 117 for five so James Harris what is the assessment with five to go well five wickets down advantage Glamorgan Sussex have definitely come back into this I think in the last few overs um, they've definitely picked the run rate up and they'll be looking to continue to do so I think for the last five overs if they can but Glamorgan know here if they can chip away at another wicket or two they can start to expose the, the Sussex tail and, and keep them down to a score that, that they'll be happy with Batting to come after James Coles the uh, man left Finn Hudson Prentice could well be next Starry Cavalis, Brad Curry Tamal Mills 117 for five, then 15 overs gone. Sussex battling away as Gorvin bowls and Shadab plays it into the offside for a single. So uh, Sussex could easily get to 160, 170 without really having had a lot of momentum for a lot of their innings. Strange, really. Gorvin is in to bowl. Chipped towards square leg by Coles. Single taken. Fletcher does the fielding. Even the used wicket this season seems to be uh, better value for the batters than maybe some uh, some fresh ones in past years. Definitely. and Definitely better than used pitches you've seen here in used past. Gorvin bowls. Driven to backward point. Single taken. Shite the wickets. Single to shut up. And like I said, because it is a used wicket, we don't necessarily know what a good score is. We saw Somerset chase down 170 a couple of days ago on this wicket pretty comfortably. So for if you're a Glamorgan player or fan, you're probably quite happy at the moment. Colds on strike on five and hoist this one up towards long on. It won't carry. It's the first bounce to Rory Smith. Single, 121 for five. Not quite sure how the ground staff have been able to do it, really. To put a, I know he was mainly a bowler these days, would approve, but uh, put a bit of uh, 20 to 30 runs extra on, on the par scores here. As Gorvin bowls, and that's hoiked away towards, and that's cleared mid wicket by quite a way. Shut up. Really managing to uh, swing the arms for that one very well timed and it's soared about 15 metres over the mid-wicket boundary it's a big six from Shadab Khan decided to take on Andy Gorvin take on the fielder on the boundary and just decide to hit it straight over his head <laughs> simple as that, 127 for 5 ball back with Gorvin who bowls again to Shadab who will reach his half century here off 39 deliveries 
and an excellent recovery job as uh, throw comes in when he's home. Excellent recovery job that Shadab has done with his half century off uh, 39 deliveries has uh, recovered, helped Sussex recover from 44 for 4 to 129 for 5. And Shadab, once my page refreshes, <laughs> has hit two fours and three sixes in that. It's been a really good innings from him. He had to start a little bit slower than he probably would like to, uh, just because of those early wickets that were lost, as we've said. But he's starting to, to look better and better and put the foot down through his innings here. And with four overs to go, he, he's not going to be slowing down anytime soon. Run rate above eight for the first time as McElroy switches to the tough end. Here he comes, left arm over the wicket at Coles. Coles goes for it, and it could be caught. It just drops into that gap at mid-wicket. <laughs> he will say a brilliant placement, but it wasn't. <laughs> it swung very hard and got in nowhere near the middle of his bat. Very safe with no man in the wicket, but um, yeah, just jogged through for an easy single in the end. McElroy with uh, a wicket this evening. Puts him up at 17 for this competition. Here he comes, McElroy, fuller that time. Now then, is that going to evade? Yes, it is easily. The man at uh, long on, it's another six. Shut up, really putting the foot on the accelerator here. Clean strike of the ball. I thought for a minute that uh, might have not got <laughs> everything on it, but uh, he did, in fact, over Sam Northeast for six. Only into the front row of the crowd, though, rather than the fourth or tenth. <laughs> yes, previous one smacked over mid wicket. Boundaries are in on that side in front of the grandstand. Here comes McElroy coming around the wicket, changes the angle, but pushes prodded into uh, the offside, down to the man at long off. There's another single to Will Smale, 137 for five. So they've pushed on, and they'll be looking, as Nick said, now 160, 170, and it really hasn't been an explosive 20 overs. No, they haven't looked in particularly any control at all no. from a batting perspective, but uh, this score just creeps, keeps creeping up at the moment. With this man, taking guard crucial shut up and oh. that's another six all the way oh. clean strike of the ball and he's decided that enough's enough and he is going to try and take Sussex towards that 170 mark brilliant clean hit once more from shut up Khan and that just shows well, Jamie McElroy's just gone for a couple of Yorkers there, really, and it's a brilliant, brilliant ball if you hit and, and land it right on that crease line, but if you miss these days with a with a half volley or a low full toss, they invariably go wasn't much back out of the park. Uh, no, he's a good young player, James Coles, got 100 against us in the championship down there. Had the pleasure of, uh, of having Mr. Steve Smith at the other end while he was get, scoring that 100 as well, which is something I'm sure he really enjoyed. Here comes McElroy, and Coles uh, squeezes that one out to the offside. Do you want to remind us who dismissed Steve Smith? Well, I technically got him out, I think. Um, that's what it says in the scorebook. I'm sure if anyone the saw... think it went up. I'm sure if anyone saw the replay or saw it on Sky Sports before the test match, it might have said that it <laughs> might not have been hitting the stumps, but... but... They all count. Steve Smith, of course, went cheaply in both innings can't envisage him going cheaply as cheaply as uh, McElroy's a full toss uh, that could be caught on the mid-wicket boundary no it isn't and again one a chance goes and uh, that was Andrew Salter and uh, just slow coming in and it was one of those uh, difficult ones where um, it's hard to judge but he came in and the bounce missed the bounce and it went for four so another chance goes begging and tough. that was end of over tough catch to judge but that turned into the big over that the Sussex Sharks were looking for Andrew Salter running in didn't quite get there or maybe just got it on the full but crept through as he was diving forward and went for another boundary 19 coming from that expensive over and uh, that 17th over could prove costly 
Yeah, Sussex could even be looking to 180 now, which is far beyond what they look set to get at 44 for four, 102 for five. That's a glue into bowl to Coles, who flat bats one through the offside. And this one, oh, it's just run away from the fielder. And Glamorgan really having uh, not a day they'll want to remember in the field as Andrew Salter, normally so reliable, got his body behind that, but somehow or other it cannoned away for four. Coles will be delighted. He's on to 18. 152 for five. Sussex on the charge. Umpires consulting over the state of the ball. Um, have they changed it there? Well, the umpire just pulled out a ball from his pocket, <laughs> which I can't remember ever seeing before, really, and just threw it to the other umpire. So something's happened with the ball. <laughs> I, yeah, I think he threw the threw away the one that he'd just taken out of his pocket I don't know 152 for 5 Coles on 18 that's a glue bowls hits him on the pad leg by taken as the ball trickles towards the square leg umpire 153 for 5 so Sussex looking for their fifth win look as though they will be able to post a competitive total here at Sapphire Gardens this evening Thanks largely to the work of Shadab Khan. 62 off 42 at the moment. That's a glue bowls to him. And a swing and a miss. Cook takes the leg bail off. As the ball, I think, went over the top. Shadab looking away towards mid-wicket boundary, which is fairly extensive, even though the rope is in 25, 30 metres away from the advertising hoardings in front of the grandstand. Hats a glue, bowls, shut up, has pulled that one round and will pick up four runs down towards fine leg. And that uh, sees Sussex galloping on as shut up, peppers the boundaries at the moment. This partnership's just building a bit too big and a bit too quickly here for Glamorgan. Sussex seems to be finding the boundary with with too much ease and that's inching this score up all the time run rate creeping up now 8.9 and over and Sussex are looking like posting a pretty good score that's glue balls outside off stump hit out towards extra cover there's a chase around the boundary for McElroy just manages to tap it back inside the ropes Salter completes the fielding and how many did they run there James I think just two just the two, just the two. to yeah. shut up He moves on to 68 not out. It's 159 for five. This is the last ball, the 18th over here on BBC Sport. As that is pummeled up towards long on. McElroy, well, he slipped as he fielded that one. It looked as though he was well in position behind it, but uh, lost his footing. And uh, they've come back for another two. Shadow moves to 70 not out. And Sussex are now looking at a really respectable total. 161 for five with two overs to come. Who's this girl again? Never heard of her. She gets a lot of airplay, doesn't she? <laughs> it's probably living next door to Alice. Oh, no, that's another one. So 32 coming from the last two overs. Too expensive overs, so Glamorgan need two big overs to tighten up. Rory Smith will bowl the penultimate one. <laughs> and uh, crowd catch. One of those bump balls. Yeah. Right in the block hole, though. That's the one Jamie McElroy was aiming for when those two balls went for six in his last over driven into the ground, fielded by Smith here he comes from the tough end, full, and that just surveys the bowler, up to long off, and uh, I think he got a hand to it, Smith, yeah, just painful one we can ill afford more <laughs> injuries Lamorgan. I think he's okay 162 for 5, fine innings by Shadab Khan, 70 from 46 Coles in the supporting role on 19 so 
10 balls to go. That run rate creeping up to nine. Shot up on strike. Smith, a waft, oh. and it's the finger caught the toe end of the bat, past the man at third man, and races to the boundary for four. Well, he's going to take a few He's going to right the toe end of the bat that time from Shadab Khan. So many balls end up a third man. It's a really unpopular fielding position. He's often a man who's in the circle, but so many balls when the batsmen are swinging get edged down there and you can't help feeling, well, you always want an extra fielder, but you can't help thinking that you'd probably leave him down there. And the pace of the ball did the rest. The Smith uh, comes in and that's uh, whipped into the leg side to Long. On they going for 12. They've gone for two. There's a mix-up. It should be out. Now then, well, uh, the throw came to Smith and uh, it was launched up to Chris Cook and uh, I think Shadab has made ground and is okay. He's looking as though he's taken a knock in the process. He's got a lot of tape. He's just taken his glove off. I don't think uh, the throw... His left hand. Let's see the throw coming from Rory Smith. There's a bit of a mix-up. They went for the second. Shadab slipped and uh, did well to recover in the end perhaps a better throw by Smith to Cook and he'd have been in trouble well Rory Smith would have definitely run out James Coles I think if he'd have taken the bails off but decided to go and throw the ball towards Chris Cook the wicketkeeper's end to try and get Shadab but it's ended up as just a two <laughs> here comes Smith two balls remaining of this over bangs that one in short smashes uh, that Shadab over the man at uh, cover and it's uh, hurled back in. They'll uh, get a couple more. 170 for five. So it's all happening in this over. We could have had a run out. We could have had two wickets, uh, two catches. Definitely the one where there was a mix up between deep mid wicket and the man at uh, long on. And then Andrew Salter misjudged one as well on the deep mid-wicket boundary. That's a fine shot. Fine, oh. fine shot by Shadab. All the way over long off. That's gone a long, long way. And it's another full complement. It's another six. And Sussex are getting up to the 180 mark here, courtesy of Shadab Khan. Well, it's a brilliant strike. He stood and admired it. It went straight over the stand and over towards the taff. Rory Smith going for that Yorker again. Just missed. Just a little bit of a half volley, but Shadab can't find the middle of the bat and it went sailing over the stand and they really are finding the boundary too often here for Glamorgan's liking. Well, this is a, a tremendous surge from the visitors who are only 68 for four at the halfway mark. 47 from three overs. Oof. They've now added 108 off the uh, last nine overs that Glamorgan have delivered. Jamie McElroy. We'll try and finish things off for Glamorgan and bowls a full toss that's uh, played to cover for a single by Coles. That gets Shadab on strike and uh, his T20 career best is 91. He's played 253 games, so uh, this is certainly one of his best efforts in uh, a long white ball career. McElroy bowls to him, hits him on the pads, and uh, Shadab was on the back foot, so he can't go through for a leg by. Four balls left, hits him on the toe, I think, rather than the pad. So he's struggling a, a little bit, Shadab, having uh, been examining his hand. Slipped a couple of moments ago, now whacked on the boot. Four balls left of this Sussex innings. 177 for five. They're already pretty competitive here as McElroy bowls. Leg stump Yorker worked away by Shadab. Single taken. Fletcher feels they'll try and come back for two and they do. 179 for five. It's, it's a heck of an innings from Shadab who has not really performed with the bat for Sussex until tonight. So Glamorgan with all their leg side fielders set back at the moment. McElroy balls straight driven, but uh, it is fielded at mid off by Will Smale. The youngster playing his 
third game in the uh, competition and he's now got a, a numbered shirt as well he's number 28 Rory Smith has remembered his number 20 tonight so it's Jess Fletcher who is unnumbered 180 for 5 and well there go the stumps as Coles tries some sort of reverse ramp and uh, it was too outrageous even at this stage of the innings Coles has been bowled by McElroy for 20 and Sussex are 180 for 5 with one ball left it's played a nice little innings there James Coles in a partnership really good partnership with Shadab Carter getting Sussex up to a score here which will definitely look competitive this evening on this wicket good bowling from Jamie McElroy finishing off this innings really well four runs so far off the last over with with one ball remaining and he's been he's been Glamorgan's well shining light with the ball and another two wickets for him tonight two to McElroy three to Van der Hochten last ball then of the Sussex innings as Hudson Prentice is on strike McElroy bowls a low full toss it's clubbed away on the leg side Smith is moving around the long on boundary and fields just inside the ropes they come back for two, so Sussex finish on 182 for six. A fine last over from James McElroy, but Shadab Khan with 87 not out of just 53 deliveries has really given Sussex a competitive total that they didn't look like getting for much of their innings. 44 for four in the sixth over, just 68 on the board by halfway. The fifth wicket fell with 102 on the board, but then a stand of 78 between Shadab Khan, 87 not out, and James Coles with 20 not out, as uh, uh, 20 rather bowls off the penultimate ball, has given Sussex really something to defend on this used wicket. James Harris, a uh, quick summary of the innings. Well, I think Sussex will be thrilled with the final position they've managed to get themselves to, if you look at where they were at halfway, 68 for four. Ravi Vipara back in the sheds and Glamorgan in, in control completely of the innings for, for the innings to finish 10 overs later and for Sussex to have 182 on the board. Brilliant innings from Shadab Khan. Uh, I think they'll be, they'll be really thrilled with their effort there in the lower order and they've definitely put a toll on the board that's going to be a challenge, I think, for Glamorgan tonight to, to chase down. Looking at the bowling figures, Van der Hochten took those three early wickets and then didn't bowl the fourth over, which may be somewhat uh, surprising. Yeah, I thought actually he was, might have even bowled his fourth one straight through. He was bowling that nicely and Glamorgan were on top so much at that point, but uh, Kieran Carson saw it differently and he went with his tried and, and sort of trusted in the last few few games that Glamorgan have played with Rory McElroy and, uh, sorry, Jamie McElroy and <laughs> Rory Smith to finish out the innings, but I think just the brilliance of Shadab Khan. There was a few misses from the bowlers, but um, he did not punish the Glamorgan bowlers when they did miss. And 87 not out of 53 is a is a great innings from him. So in the Sapphire Garden sunlight, hundreds of school children parading around the boundary, enjoying the occasion. Sussex have enjoyed that occasion. 182 for six. That's definitely a competitive total, and Glamorgan will have to go some to achieve it and stay in this competition. We'll be back with commentary on the Glamorgan innings in around about 10 minutes time.
which was considerably higher than uh, it looked for much of the Sussex innings. They were 68 for four at halfway, but finished on 182 for six, largely thanks to the efforts of their Pakistan all-rounder, Shadab Khan, who excelled with the bat for the first time in this competition. He had 87 not out of 53 deliveries. So he has given it himself and Sussex's other bowlers quite something to work with. Glamorgan have left out Billy Root and played Andrew Salter tonight. So uh, a little light on batting. It'll be Kieran Carlson to open alongside Sam Northeast with the newcomer Will Smale expected to come in next and possibly with Cameron Fletcher at four, the Kiwi batter keeper who's not keeping. There we are, 183 is the target, and uh, commentary from James Harris and Kenneth Davis to start. So a lot depends on this opening partnership between Kieran Carlson, who's in good nick, and Sam Northeast. Carlson with 71 against Somerset. It'll be Curry to start from the Cathedral Road end, and that's caught first ball at point. Would you believe it? Carlson couldn't resist outside off sting and it's been caught from the bowling of Ben Curry and that is a truly awful start in reply for Glamorgan Kieran Carlson goes without troubling the scorers yeah ball from the left arm over bowler just outside off stump uh, Kieran probably expecting a little bit of swing back but Brad Curry has managed to, to slide the ball across him there. Kieran's played at it, hit it up Ishley, and straight, unfortunately, from Glamorgan's perspective, straight to point. So, tough start. It was going to be a tough chase, this, I think, certainly an hour ago, hour and a half ago. Glamorgan wouldn't have expected to be chasing quite this many. Uh, but Kieran's been in, in great form, so it's a real shame to lose him first up. So, Bradley Curry takes the first wicket with the first ball. And Glamorgan in all sorts of trouble as uh, Will Smale comes to take guard. Here's Curry, tail up from the Cathedral Road end, left arm over, and that's prodded into the offside. There's no score. It was caught by Ibrahim, the uh, subfielder who was on. Not sure in place of who, but he was the man at backward point so Carlson who was in fine fine form against Somerset goes departs without scoring here's uh, Brad Curry from the Cathedral Old M left arm over and that's prodded down to uh, the man and it's past the man at uh, mid off so they'll collect a couple Will Smale 27 against uh, Surrey and uh, played also against Somerset. I think it could be Shadab Khan, you know. I can't pick him out anywhere on the field at the moment. He did have, seemed to have a problem with his hand. Yeah, and slipped, uh, almost ran out as uh, Ben Curry. Oh, that was slashed down. It was to see, was that a... Is that a cotton ball? <laughs> it was a chance, very, it was a hard chance. Difficult. Slashed uh, back by Smale and uh, yeah, we'll go down as a chance albeit very very difficult two for one uh, Glamorgan in reply two balls remaining of this very fine Brad Curry over here he comes trudging in from the Cathedral Road end left arm over the wicket to Smale Smale cuts and uh, fielded by the subfielder once more and we believe that uh, Shadab Khan has gone off. Fine innings by Shadab Khan, which has uh, put Sussex in pole position. Uh, yeah, that was a would, will go down as a dropped and a chance. Few went down from the Glamorgan fielders as well, which hasn't helped. The final ball of the over, and there's a big appeal from Curry. But I think he was going down leg, and they go through for a single. So a fine over. Glamorgan in all sorts of trouble in reply. Uh, four for one with Kieran Carson, the man out. Yeah, not a great start from a Glamorgan perspective here. Losing Kieran Carson early was always going to be 
a disappointment for them after the form he's been in. The one saving grace at the moment for Glamorgan is if it is Shadab Khan who's off the field, it's going to give them a big advantage because he was going to be going to be probably one of their main bowlers from from a Sussex side in the middle of the innings. Yeah, they've still got uh, plenty of options as uh, Carvelis will come into the attack from the River Taff ends. The uh, Greek South African, Aristide Carvelis, born in South Africa, has played uh, international cricket for the country of his heritage, Greece. Smale 3, Northeast 1. 4 for 1 Glamorgan after 1 over chasing 183 to win. Carvelis bowls northeast chips it towards mid on slightly aerially and uh, there is no run. Carvelis has been doing well with 4 for 20 last night against Gloucestershire so he's on a roll. Shadab Khan also got four wickets last night but uh, may not be able to bowl in this innings. In comes Carvelis, bowls, northeast just noodles it down towards square leg. So looking at Sussex's options, they have got the pace of Mills, seam of Hudson Prentice, the two seamers we've seen, Curry and Carvelis, James Cole's slow left arm and Ravi Bapara medium pace. So they've still probably got six decent options even without Shadab there. Carvelis, slightly jerky action. Six foot five, tall man, bowls down leg side, wide called. Six for one. Even with all the bowling options, Sussex have got Shadab, still going to be a big loss if he doesn't come out here onto the field for them. So Sussex operating with a slip Tom Clark at the moment, having taken the, the early wicket. Mills is up in the circle at third man. Carvelis bowls and that's played back past him by Smale. Has he timed it well enough to reach the ropes? Yes, it has. Will Smale, quite a tall man and uh, timed that one better than I initially thought as it went back past the stumps for four. Uh, he's coming, Will Smale, and looked really good, to be honest, in his first few games in a, in a Glamorgan shirt. Played nicely in the second team with the opportunities he had, scored 100 as well as some other really good innings and, and has started well in his, in his first team. As Carvelis bowls and Smale goes up and over, long off, it will just about cross the boundary, almost plugged but uh, Smale getting, well, 80% behind that maybe, it was still good enough to reach the boundary. Plenty of it when you're in the power play and most of the fielders are inside the circle. A couple of boundaries from him to get Glamorgan going at 14 for one in the second over, chasing 182. Carlson caught Ibrahim Bold Curry first ball. Carvelis in to bowl, worked on the leg side by Smale, easy single out to square leg. In fact, the two outfielders for Carvelis then were square leg and mid wicket. It'll be changed slightly for northeast because point is going back and midwicket is coming up. 15 for one, 11 off this over. Sam northeast, 269 runs at 26.9, strike rate of 118, and uh, that one is driven to mid off, but he can't pierce the field. 15 for one after two overs. Glamorgan chasing 183. A couple of boundaries in that over, but. Still not too bad a one there from a Sussex perspective. Only going for 11. They've certainly won the, the early exchange of this inning so far. I think that's Shadab coming back on the field, possibly. I think he's running there to sort of short third. He's got a lot of strapping. Yeah, that's him with a lot of strapping on his, on his left hand. So he's obviously okay to, to come on and take part for, for Sussex. As Curry comes in, who took the wicket of Kieran Carlson's full and it slashed fine, fine shot through the covers for four. By Will Smale, who's looking in good nick at the start of his innings. Two boundaries in the last over. Curry a bit full and wide, and uh, Smale took full advantage. Really is the best place to bat at the top of the order in white ball cricket. 
vast majority of the field is inside the circle and a nice juicy half volley from Brad Curry and smacked through the covers for four. <laughs> Change of bat though for Smale. So Shadab Khan has taken his place back on the pitch. It'll be interesting to see how that, if at all, does hamper him uh, in terms of bowling. Curry that's whipped off the legs into uh, the man at deep square. It bounces once and they think, well, there's, there's a man there. Which is it? Really interesting one from the fielder, Oli Carter, a deep square leg. He was in the air a long, long, long time, just didn't commit it so well. Well, you, you have to say that that was a catchable ball. He could have gone for it. He might have got it. You know, you definitely think he'd have got there with a the dive. The only thing I'll give him is looking into the sun of that direction. A few went astray for Glamorgan in Sussex, Sussex innings. Curry comes in. Left arm over. Full delivery again through the covers. Uh, only a single this time. As the man sweeping on the boundary hurls it back in to Burgess 21 for 1 in the third northeast 3 Smale the man taking it to the opposition on 17 Kieran Carson the captain the man out first ball caught at point by the sub Ibrahim off the bowling of Brad Curry and Curry is the man coming in from the Cathedral Road end left arm over the wicket to Smale that was wide I think it would have been called a wide as well, but it was creamed. But there's a man out there sweeping on the extra cover boundary. 22 for one. So Glamorgan have recovered after that early shock of losing Kieran Carlson in this power play. Run rate 8.2, 9.2 the required run rate. Here comes Curry full off the legs and that'll go all the way over Cal Corner for six a little bit of class from Sam Northeast right in his arc right where he wanted it ball just swinging back from the left arm over Brad Curry stood still kept his head still swung through the ball and hit it over wide long for a, for a big six yeah with something to spare as well Curry comes in Bowls, good uh, length ball, and there's no run. Pushed into the offside, so better from De Morgan. 28 for one, so 13 coming off the third. So they've uh, regrouped since uh, losing Kieran Carlson in the first ball. Yeah, and they needed to. They needed a good power play here to to chase down this target of of 180 that Sussex have set them two boundaries in the over as well as a few singles they'll be pretty happy with that and 28 for one off three they'll be fairly happy with the start I think Carvelis then to bowl a second over as that one is <laughs> it's looking over fine leg <laughs> as Will Smale went for the ramp there sent it up at mid wicket it's come straight off the toe of the bat I think hopefully that bat is is okay he's already changed one Uh, you have to have a, a strong toe as well as strong edges these days. 29 for one. Northeast on to strike on nine. Carvelis in. And Northeast cracks it into the offside but uh, bounces up nicely for cover point. And uh, there's no run. Sam Northeast usually looking to play a slightly more orthodox game than uh, many of his colleagues. Worked certainly in style in the uh, T20 Blast last season. A slow start to this year's campaign, but has uh, has picked up. As in comes the next delivery from Carvelis. Northeast is a bit tucked up there, so he just prods it to mid on for a single. 30 for one Glamorgan in this fourth over, chasing 183 to win so uh, you were signing things alongside uh, David Lloyd is the skipper anywhere near yet as far as you know oh, he's getting closer uh, he bowled at me in the nets earlier on today so that's always a pretty good sign that, uh, that he's ho hopefully not far away as that's worked away by Smale down towards backwards square there's a good scrambling stop on the boundary 
and uh, they're back for two runs, 32 for one. The, the physios and the medics must have been uh, busier than some of the players this season. Wow, they had, they had six weeks off almost at the start <laughs> uh, because we seem to sail through with everything yeah. with nobody getting injured. But this last month, six weeks, they've, uh, they, yeah, they've had a lot of work to do. 32 for one. Carvalis bowls a swing and a miss from Smale, just getting a little bit overexcited there. We're hopefully going to get a few players back. David Lloyd, as you mentioned, recovering from that hamstring injury that he's had. He'll hopefully be back on the park soon. Tom Bevan's coming back to form and back to fitness. He played in the second team this week. His shoulders looking in better, better shape all the time. So hopefully we'll have a couple more players available soon. 32 for one. Carvelis in to bowl to Smale, who comes down the wicket and blasts it over mid-off for four runs. One bounce into hover cover it goes. Good batting here from Will Smale. Just using his feet, coming down the wicket to Ari Carvelas. Not scared by the pace. Carvelas bowling at sort of mid 70s mile an hour, so very confident using his feet to, to come down and got that exactly where he wanted and just hit it over the top and mid on. Four overs gone, 36 for one. Now, here we go. This will be demanding for Glamorgan. Tamal Mills. And his boxer tricks. Yeah, the speeds to Tamal Mills. Uh, the reason why Eddie Byram is uh, injured. It looked uh, like it was going to be one of those badly bruised injuries at the time, but uh, it resulted in a nasty hip injury, which uh, doesn't seem that end in sight in terms of Eddie Byram coming back at the moment. Here is Tamal Mills' first over, left arm over, and... Uh, Northeast just using the pace to prod that one in through uh, mid wicket. A single is taken, so he's up to 11 off uh, 10 balls. Smale, nice little innings of 25 from 14. When you talk about the lack of pace that Curry and Carvelas have had so far, Tamar Mills certainly has enough to <laughs> to really scare you. He can get up north of 90 mile an hour on when he's in rhythm. The Test International, and that's. That's been dragged on, is it? Yes, it has. Oh. It's bold. It looked completely innocuous from Tamal Mills. And Smale hits his bat in frustration. He's dragged it on. It's the second wicket for Tamal Mills. And Will Smale departs. Yeah, just dragged it on. And he can't believe it. No, well, I think he was expecting something a lot quicker. That was Tamal Mills' ball out the back of the hand. <laughs> Done in for a bit of lack of pace, if anything. Tried to guide it just down to to point or third man for a single, but has managed to get it under edge and, and drag it onto his stumps. And really unfortunate for him. He was looking really good there. And Mills must have more difference in terms of miles an hour between his fastest and his slow ball than, than virtually anyone else on the circuit? Very possibly, yes. I mean, him being left arm makes it even more awkward. You know he's got enough pace to hit you in the head if he tries, but... It's the arm speed with him. The arm speed that he bowls that back of the hand slow ball with is so good and so quick. It's it's really, really hard to pick up. So the former Essex man has taken his first wicket. 13 T20 internationals for England. Tamal Mills. So the second man to fall is Will Smale. Cameron Fletcher, the Kiwi, will face. Mills comes in from the Cathedral Road end. Bangs that one in short. They take a quick single. And uh, shy at the stumps, it hits the stumps, ricochets uh, away, but uh, no chance of a second being taken. It's also good on commentary to Mal Mills as well. There we go. So if ever we're down... Well, he, d he joined us, I think, when he was injured, just fancied uh, an hour or two on the, on the mic. It's very interesting. Hoping to strike once more to Mal Mills, the pace man. A bit uh, leg side that time, no wide called. Through to the keeper. So just the eight balls to go in the power play. Glamorgan 38 for two. They'll be hoping to push on beyond the 50 mark if they can. 
course, Sussex lost four wickets in their power play, but made it up through uh, Shadab Khan. Here comes Mills. Two balls to go from his over. Full wide. And that's a caress down to uh, third man. Well, deep point coming round. Another single. Cameron Fletcher was out without scoring against Somerset on Wednesday night on a uh, short-term contract due to the glut of injuries. The latest to Colin Ingram, who uh, had an Achilles injury a week ago down at Chelmsford. Mills, the last ball of the over, steaming in from the Cathedral Road end, and that's a leave, which is very, very odd in this form of the game. So, Glamorgan, with a lot of work to do, one over to go in the batting power play, 39 for two. Cameron Fletcher just getting his eye in by the looks. It's not often you see a leave outside off something in the fifth over uh, in a T20 game, but nice opportunity for him to get up the order tonight and, and to bat at number four. But uh, Glamorgan probably slightly behind the game at the moment. Going at 7.8 runs and over, required rate ticking up. It's at 9.6 and Glamorgan would like, really, really like a good over here just to finish off his power play. It will be bowled by the man bund Finn Hudson Prentice, if that's the word, as uh, that is helped over backwards square by northeast, but it'll be stopped just inside the boundary, scrambling stop on the ropes, and just the single taken. 40 for two, Glamorgan chasing 183 to win. But uh, Sussex managed to accelerate in the the back half of their innings, so Glamorgan will have hopes that they can do the same unless the uh, pitch starts playing up. Slower ball from Hudson Prentice, worked away by Fletcher. It's gone down leg sides. Bat was involved, says the umpire. And Cameron Fletcher has his first boundary in Glamorgan Kellers. He's on five. You don't have to answer this if it's a uh, secret, just James, but is Cameron Fletcher likely to play in the championship from what you understand? Oh, I don't have to lie at all. I've got absolutely no idea what the team's <laughs> going to be on Sunday. 44 for two. As Hudson Prentice bowls and Fletcher defends it back to the bowler. Yes, a different coach, of course. Matthew Maynard in charge of red ball still. Mark Elaine taking the reins for this and for the, the one day cup in August. 44 for two, Glamorgan chasing 183. We've lost Carlson first ball and Smale for 25. Fletcher on strike on five and uh, works one in the offside. Slower ball looked like from Hudson Prentice. Carter fields and they'll go through for a single. As uh, the light dips a little bit, the floodlights coming into play. And the crowd in, well, a little bit of a subdued mood. Entertain us! A trumpeter gives a blast to try and rally the troops. 45 for two. Hudson Prentice bowls northeast. Hits that one nicely through mid wicket. Oh, he's timed it well. It's raced away towards the kids in the jellyfish stand, all waving their four placards. A couple with sixes. Turn those round. And uh, Morgan get a much needed boundary. He's got a good bat out there with him tonight, Sammy Northeast. That one hit the middle and just beat the fielder out on the deep mid wicket fence. 49 for two. Hudson Prentice, last ball of the power play. Northeast hits it on the leg side. Didn't really get a full bat on it, but it does bring up the half century for Glamorgan. Oh, that's a shocking throw in to uh, keeper Purchase, who gives the field of daggers. 50 for two after the power play are Glamorgan, so 11 off that over. Sussex at this stage were 46 for four before the Shadab Khan blast took them up to 182. Probably just give that to Sussex, you know, in that power play. Um, Glamorgan need a Shadab, Shadab Khan-esque sort of innings to get them home here, but required rate of nine and a half and over. Probably would have liked a few more runs in that power play, but um, with Ravi Vapara to bowl and Shadab Khan to bowl here through the middle, this could be, could be quite the challenge here for, for Glamorgan in a must-win game. 
Yeah, the former England man to take the pace off the ball from this Cathedral Road end with his medium paces. 50 for two then Glamorgan in a must-win game. To give you a recap, they need to win all three remaining fixtures in this competition at the very least and rely on other results going their way. Here comes the first ball of Ravi Bopara's first over, paddled away into the leg side for a single. Northeast moves to 18. So just below the required run rate at the moment of uh, 9.5. The target, incidentally, 183. And that due to a masterclass from Shadab Khan. 87 not out from 53 balls, supported by James Coles, a partnership of 78. Bapara just straight down leg and they'll uh, pick a single. Bapara scampers after that ball and fails. So a lot dependent on these two now to stay there. Wickets in hand, eight of them. Of course, Sussex had lost four in the power play and should have lost more. Just a few fielding mishaps could yet cost Morgan D. Dear, we shall see northeast on strike. Here comes Ravi Bapara taking the pace off the ball. And uh, northeast whips that uh, into the leg side. They think about a second. So, yeah, there is a bit of a subdued nature to this Friday night crowd at Safari Gardens but a few boundaries could change that <laughs> in an instant Fletcher to just taking guard Canterbury man here comes Ravi Bopala the captain and that's a good length ball and uh, taking the pace off and it's very difficult to get the ball off the square at the moment yeah it is and we're seeing the the ever evolving bowling of Ravi Bapara now bowling very much like a spinner almost coming in off off a few less paces than he used to covering the ball up with a spinner's field uh, bowling a lot of knuckleballs and change-ups and trying to keep the batsman guessing here comes Bapara an ultimate ball of the over. That's uh, given a bit of width, but uh, man out at cover boundary will field. S sort of S Steve Barwick-esque <laughs> kind of uh, pace, the former Glamorgan man of yesteryear. Before James's time. I played against, I played against Baz. Uh, Ponte de Lice, Britain Ferry Steel. <laughs> uh, quite a long time ago now, I think. <laughs> Here comes Papara, the final ball of the over. It is short, but again, they'll only receive a single. So that's a good Ravi Bapara over. The first one for the former England player. And uh, it's uh, even Stevens out there at the moment. It's uh, very hard to predict. It is, if not, maybe Glamorgan slightly behind. Um, Ravi Bapara is going to be a hard man to get away with, with his skill set. Um, Glamorgan, 56 for two off seven run rate creeping up towards just under 10 and over at the moment and we need a good partnership here and Glamorgan need to start finding the boundary a bit like Sussex did uh, second half of that Sussex innings they found the boundary fairly easily um, and you feel now with with Glamorgan's innings they need to sort of need to try and find a boundary and over to keep up with this run rate well it just could be those three overs that went for 47 uh, the tail end of that innings that could cost them dear. Yep, Sharab Khan dropped on five. Sam Northeast in a mix up with Jamie McElroy. Coles to bowl, his left arm slow, and Fletcher pokes the first ball back into the offsides, and there is no run. I get the feeling that someone less experienced like James Coles might be the sort of player. Glamorgan have to target as uh, Fletcher works one into the leg side and they'll run one and that'll be all definitely you see that as a good plan the only thing from a Sussex perspective you've got two right handed batsmen in and, and James Colt spinning the ball away which is often a little bit harder to play 
Coles Bowles, and that's it inside out by Northeast over extra cover. It has gone all the way. He has got a good bat out there, James. He's got a great bat out there. He always always has nice bats to Sam. <laughs> well, that's a lovely shot. Standing in his crease, opening up the offside, hitting the, hitting the ball over extra cover. And that's the sort of batting Glamorgan need to, to try and keep finding these boundaries in the middle. 63 for two. Down the wicket comes Northeast and flays that one through extra cover all along the ground this time. Just shot past the fielder in the ring who could do nothing about it, Papara. And uh, Northeast finding the gap well to pick up back to back boundaries. Six and four off the teenager, James Coles. 67 for two. Northeast moves to 31, not out. There's Coles Bowles, and Northeast is forced to hit this one back to him. Dot ball. Good comeback from the youngster. 11 off the over so far. Required run rate 9.5. Coles Bowles, and Northeast hits this one through mid wicket. It'll be picked up though by the fielder running round the boundary on the first bounce. Thought for a moment he'd managed to bisect the field, but it was just a little bit too close to the mid-wicket man. 68 for two, 12 off the over, 183 is the target. So it's 115 off 12, Northeast 32 and Fletcher 10. Definitely looks like Sam Northeast saw, saw the game the same way you did, Nick. Definitely looked more positive there against, against James Coles, taking it over for 12. Sam finding the boundary a couple of times in that over just to ease a little bit of the pressure building on, on the Glamorgan batsman. And that single means that Northeast is on strike to Ravi Wapara. Good first over, just six coming off it. That's cut into the offside, but it should be cut off on the point, deep point boundary. And it's flung in. They'll collect a couple. So Glamorgan, 70 for two, just ahead in terms of where Sussex uh, were. But of course, uh, a lot of runs came at the tail end of their innings. So, uh, but if these two can stay at the wicket, Sam Northeast looking in fine form, Bopara, full toss, and that'll be dabbed down to long on. Just a single. Northeast moves to 35 from 24. Probably hasn't hit the heights that he did last year, but uh, he's probably been gaining in form as this competition goes on. Sam Northeast, 510 runs last year, the top scorer. Chris Cook, the top scorer so far this season in this competition. Bopara. And that just goes straight through to the keeper, Burgess. Chris Cook to come, of course. Bopara, medium pace from the Cathedral Road end past the umpire. Fullish length delivery and it's uh, chopped into the offside a point and they'll take a single but two good overs so far from Ravi Wapara with two to go from his second. Yeah and Cameron Fletcher 11 off 12 hasn't quite found the middle of the bat yet. The worry is here that he puts a bit too much pressure on Sam Northeast and, and makes Sam play, play a shot he might not necessarily want to. Just has a look to see where the fielders are on the boundary deep square deep mid wicket. Northeast and it's uh, driven to long on. There's a single, so uh, Ravi Bapara doing what uh, he's ordered to do and that take the pace off the ball. Just singles coming from his uh, two overs so far. 73 for two, the last ball of the over. Here comes uh, Ravi Bapara and that's another. Good delivery, dinked into the offside. So he'll be well pleased with his efforts. Glamorgan 74 for two. Just the six, a runner ball coming off uh, Ravi Bapara. 12 coming off both overs. Yeah, and Ravi Bapara, you know, running in, bowling pretty slowly, bowling at fast sort of spinner speed. 56, 57, and up to 60 mile an hour. This is the man here now from the Sussex that want to come on, Shadab Khan hasn't bowled an over yet 
So of the 11 overs remaining, he's got four available if if Sussex need him for those four. And Glamorgan, you feel just sliding behind the rates here. Required rates up at 10 now. Need to keep hitting some boundaries if they can. So shut up starts his bowling spell to Fletcher, who cuts but uh, straight to backward point, and there's no run. And with Chris Cook and Tim van der Hochten to come, van der Hochten probably at six, I would imagine, as he was against Gloucestershire. And Fletcher needs to uh, get on with it or get out, as <laughs> we say in uh, the less sophisticated uh, forms of the game. There's probably a professional expression for that as well. 75 for two as Fletcher takes a single. Too long off. Northeast on strike on 36 off 25. That's dragged down by Shadab, and Northeast has placed that well up towards oh. mid wicket. It's a superb piece of combined fielding, though, by the two men out in the deep. There's one plunging and the other picking it up, and they just take two runs. 77 for two as we approach halfway. The target 183. Shadab balls, and Northeast says, I'll have another go at that. Trying to hit it a bit harder, and he does. It's, it's uh, virtually in the same place, cleanly off the bat, and finds the boundary this time. A couple of drag downs there from Shadab Khan. Sam Northeast hitting the second one out the middle of the bat and managing to pierce the fielders and take him for a boundary. News that uh, will interest Sussex supporters is that Chitashwa Pujar has been left out of the Indian tour squad for West Indies next month as that one sees Northeast rocking back and hitting it out towards point for a single 82 for 2 so last ball of the first half of the innings Glamorgan still very much in it but with 100 and 1 to win shut up balls and Fletcher Gets a slightly wide delivery that he too smashes out towards point again for just the single. So, maths are simple. Thank goodness for that. 83 for two. Glamorgan need 100 off 10. They do, and they're ahead of the halfway stage. Compared to where Sussex were, Sussex 68 for four. Glamorgan 15 runs to the good, but you just feel like they're not quite hitting the middle of the bat as much as they'd like to be at the, mo at the moment. Required run rate up at 10. Cameron Fletcher has moved his way to 14, and, and he's the man really here for Glamorgan. Needs to up his strike rate to, to come with Sam Northeast and push Glamorgan forward. Just 12 coming off uh, both overs for Ravi Bopara. That's uh, pushed into the offside. They'd look to run the first one hard, but uh, in comes the ball flung to keeper Burgess. And there's just a single. So that brings Sam Northeast, who's moved on to 43 from 28. He's been look at, looked in good nick. Opara. Medium pace. Very difficult to get the ball off the square. That's uh, through mid wicket. Just another single. So uh, you feel Glamorgan at some point will be trying to up the ante here haven't got at Ravi Bopara yet plenty of wickets in hand and uh, with the strike hitters of Chris Cook and Tim van der Hochten to come they may have to take some risks here Fletcher on strike the New Zealander and it's a dot ball and uh, he seems to be in a bit of a rut at the moment Cameron Fletcher yeah it doesn't look easy for him obviously coming off a couple of low scores in his first couple of games in a Glamorgan shirt he'll, he'll be wanting to put a score on the board tonight but just need him to up his run rate up his strike rate here sorry 98 required off 57 balls here comes uh, Ravi Bopara and uh, he's played a captain another well I was going to say a dot ball they do run through it's a single to point but he's played a, a captain's role with the ball so far Ravi Bopara both batsmen finding it difficult to get the ball off the square 86 for Two, one, eight, three. the target for Glamorgan in a must-win game. Games to come against Hampshire and Middlesex. Here comes captain Ravi Bopara. 
Bowles, Fuller that time, and that's launched. This is going to be caught. Yes, it is on the mid-wicket boundary, northeast, and that's what has happened. Some northeast probably thought they were getting bogged down in terms of their scoring, and he, the man, caught out in the deep, and he falls for 44. Just felt like Sam thought he needed to hit a boundary there. Sam, 44 off. 29 was going along quite nicely, but just as Glamorgan starts to fall behind, this run rate required a little bit. He felt like he needed to, to play a big shot. Ravi Vapara just covering the ball, bowling different deliveries. That one looked like another knuckle ball. Tried to take the fielder on a deep mid-wicket, but didn't get the ball out of the middle of his bat and unfortunately perished. Harrison Ward, the man to take an easy catch. And that probably all came from pressure. Pressure that Cameron Fletcher wasn't getting going. The, uh, it fell on Sam Northeast to try and push things on, but he went for a big hit. Didn't get the full weight to the bat behind it and it was an easy catch in the end. This the last ball then of uh, Ravi Bopara who's been very economical in T20 terms as the run rate goes northwards 86 for 3 and Chris Cook is the man to take guard a lot rests on Chris Cook's shoulders top scorer for Glamorgan in this competition driven into the offside and there's just a single so a successful over for Ra Ravi Bapara uh, wicket taking over Sam Northeast the man to go so Glamorgan just in this uh, between a rock and a hard place at the moment they need to get going they require 96 of 54 87 for 3 of 11 yeah the required rate is just just creeping in the wrong direction from the Morgan perspective Unfortunate loss to Sam Northeast in the last over, but Chris Cook, Glamorgan's man in form, Glamorgan's batsman of the season so far in this format. A lot's resting on his shoulders here, but we know he's seen us home from these, these positions in the past. Welcome to BBC Radio Wales listeners as Shadab Khan starts a new over, bowling to Chris Cook, who hits that one nicely. Back past backward point and it's raced away for four runs and Glamorgan move up to 91 for three chasing 183 Shadab Khan was Sussex's man with the bat 87 not out after Tim van der Hoogten had taken three early wickets Sussex escaping rather up to 182 for six and uh, Glamorgan just dropping a, a little bit behind the rate. They needed 100 exactly at halfway, but we've just seen an economic low from Bapara as Cook nicks a quick single into the gully. Cameron Fletcher is there, the Kiwi, on uh, 16 not out off 19 deliveries, and it will be incumbent upon him to try and open his shoulders a little bit and uh, provide some support for Chris Cook in accelerating the scoring rate. Shadab Khan then into bowl and that's off the inside edge of Fletcher's bat down to short fine leg for the single. Morgan needing to win to stay with any hope of qualifying for the quarterfinals in this injury hit season. Shadab whisking through his overs quickly, bowling to Chris Cook who Hits one down to long off, but this will be just the single. Seven to Cook, 94 for three in the 12th, chasing 183 for victory. As the, the light dips, it's now it really is floodlit cricket. Fletcher plays one into the offside and fielded by Carter out on the boundary. Away to our right, single taken. 95 for three. Fletcher moves to 18. Tim van der Hochten, who's turning himself into an all-rounder, is uh, probably in in next. Andrew Salter, Andy Govin, Peter Hatzoglu, Rory Smith, Jamie McElroy as Chris Cook cuts, but it's well cut off by a diving Tamal Mills at short third man. Cook takes the strike, which is probably good for Glamorgan. As there were nine runs off that over, which is not quite enough, but Glamorgan now needing 10.9 and over to win over the last eight. And 96 for three 
chasing 183. Certainly the fielding here from Sussex has, has definitely shown Glamorgan how it should be done. They've taken their catches so far, but their ground fielding has, has been excellent. There's been some great stops in the ring. There's been a couple of great stops on the boundary, and, and so far that's definitely the difference between the two teams. Sussex were 81 after 12, but uh, this has been a bit of a sticky patch for Glamorgan due to the man bowling now, Ravi Bapada, the captain. That's... Uh, pushed into the offside and it'll be a single Cameron Fletcher 18 from 21 hasn't really got going not to date um, and this is the sort of innings that if you hit a couple of boundaries here and, and see your team home then it's a really great knock but uh, you can't afford to get out here Cameron Fletcher Ravi Bapara's medium pace is doing the damage he's taken a wicket and been very economical as well here he comes and that's uh, again pushed into uh, the identical pos position. It's a single. 98 for three. Runs to win. 85 from 46 balls. Plenty of wickets in hand. They need to start to get going, Glamorgan, if they're going to take this one against Sussex. Bapara, the captain, just straying down leg that time, but uh, there's a man at deep backward square. Just a bit of a lull in proceedings, and uh, that's felt around Sophia Gardens. Trout just haven't been in this Glamorgan inning so far. Just a sense that they need a partner partnership. They need Chris Cook to be there. And to start striking Cameron Fletcher. And he has gone for one. And uh, that is more like it. Straight over the man at long on. Straight and true. And it's gone for six. Well, hopefully that's the boundary that Cam Fletcher needs to get himself going. Another Ravi Vapara knuckleball. Probably floated up a little bit fuller than he would have liked. Straight into Cameron Fletcher's arc. And he opens his shoulders, put his hands straight through it. And sends the ball into the crowd. Got everything behind that. That'll make him feel better. Cameron Fletcher, the Kiwi. 25 from 23 now as they try and pick up the run rate which is up to 10.6 now current run rate just over 8 and over target is 183 for Glamorgan, Fletcher 25 Chris Cook on 10 Fletcher taking guard, Ravi Bapara trying to work with all he's got trying to get anything any variation Trying to take the pace off the ball, which has been very su successful so far. Here is Bopala. Short that time. And should be two as they run the first one hard. Yes, it is. As the man had to come from the extra cover boundary. Another couple with two balls remaining of this over. This uh, a crucial time in the context of the game. As uh, Ravi Bopala starts his run up, right arm over, medium pacer from the Cathedral Road end, past the umpire, full length, and uh, again they should get two here if they run hard. And uh, it's a brilliant stop on that uh, far boundary, the man coming from uh, the extra cover boundary, and he saved two runs there as he's flung in. That is the end of the over. So another couple added to Glamorgan's tally. 109 for three, so 13 coming off that Ravi Bapara over. Brilliant fielding from Tom Clark out in the boundary. Uh, he's putting a couple of great stops out there. He must be plus eight or plus ten, possibly with the runs he saved. Which, when you think about some of the misfields and Ingram Morgan's innings, you hope that's not going to be the difference when when we get to the end of this game. But Cameron Fletcher taking ten there off the last three balls of that Ravi Bapara over. Just starting, hopefully, to find his form. And upping his strike rate with, with Glamorgan now, still needing ten and a half and over. Yeah, he's been uh, smashing it around in the Bradford League, but this is uh, a somewhat different standard. And Tamal Mills will remind him of that. Left arm, anything between slow and fast. And he's bowling to Chris Cook. Oh, that's a fast one outside off stump. And through it goes to Michael Burgess as Cook can't play bat on it. Really hard to set yourself here against Tamar Mills. 
you know he can bowl quick you know he can also bowl a brilliant slow ball and trying to pick up which ball he's going to bowl makes it makes him a really hard customer to face and to to strike for a lot of boundaries here is Mills then a little wave to a fielder sending third man just a little bit squarer underneath us Mills in to bowl to oh. Cook who's beaten again outside off stump well this is uh, some of the quickest stuff you're likely to see here this year it is that's actually watching what Tamar Mills has just done there with his field he's brought mid on up he sent third sorry he sent final leg back trying to suggest to Chris Cook that he's going to bang it in short and Chris Cook probably expecting a bouncer he's just bowled him a length ball and beating him outside off stump 109 for three Mills running towards us with that familiar little hitch kick at the start and uh, bowls to Cook who drags that one off an inside edge down on the leg side they should get two fairly easily as the man comes in off the boundary there's uh, a good throw as the keeper chased it outwards the square leg fielder was charging inwards but uh, in the end Curry's throw if he'd have hit, Cook might have been struggling, but he's picked up two runs. 111 for three. Glamorgan need 72 off 6.3 overs. So it's going to be a dramatic finish, you would hope, if Glamorgan gets uh, close. Sussex will hope it's a calm finish for their guys. Mills into. Cook who plays this one backward of square on the offside it's picked up by Carter at deep point and just the single taken not quite sure how Cook manages to play those shots so well backward of square on the offside when his body's facing out towards mid wicket he does he keeps his body very open when he bats Chris Cook it's just the brilliance of the eyes and brilliance of the hands to be honest to be able to to maneuver the ball into those gaps 13 not out to Cook. Fletcher on 29 off 25. Now, what can he do against Tamal Mills? It's a short ball. It's pulled around by Fletcher, and that is soaring for six down into the members' area down to our left. And uh, Fletcher picked that one up well, and he's moved on to 35 not out. Tamar Mills will actually think he won that battle a little bit there, although <laughs> that ball's gone into the stands. A little bit of a top edge, perhaps, from, from Cameron Fletcher, but he picked it up pretty early. Played the hook shot. Perhaps got it a little bit finer than he was aiming, but um, a great result for Glamorgan and a, a maximum just to ease some of the pressure with Tamar Mills only going for, for three runs off his first four balls of the over. 118 for three then. 65 to win, 6.1 overs remain. Fletcher on to 35 not outs. Again, an examination of the ball. As it's tossed back to the shaven-headed Mills. A man who could have played far more white ball cricket for England had he had better luck with his fitness as he's bowled short outside off stump Fletcher plays it down to backward point 119 for three well 10 off so that's slightly behind the required rate at that moment but I guess with Tamal Mills he'd probably take 10 off and over 119 for three 64 needed off six good work from Gamorgan still quite a high run rate required but Batsman in Clam Fletcher and Chris Cook both now got their eye and both looking in good form and 64 of 36 to win but these two batsmen in at the crease and, and seven wickets in hand. Ravi Bhopal has got a ball through and this is the contrast between Tamal Mills and Ravi Bhopal and uh, any bat on Tamal Mills we've just seen that from Cameron Fletcher is going to fly into the Oh, Shadam, uh, apologies. Thought he was going to bowl through then, and that was. Oh, it's run out. It is. As Fletcher was backing up, it was smacked back by Chris Cook, partially fielded by that man. And it's Cook who's gone. 
Cook is gone, and that is a big blow. Well, it's a good piece of fielding, wasn't it, on the uh, return blow from Fletcher. It was Fletcher that smacked it. It was partially uh, stopped football style by Khan. And uh, Cook obviously trying to back up, and uh, he couldn't make up his ground. That is a big blow. So Glamorgan under pressure. The fourth falls, and they uh, had to go for it. Fletcher trying to smack it down. Good piece of fielding, good piece of footwork and uh, Cook short and it's run out so Glamorgan in a bit of bother here they've lost uh, their power hitter Chris Cook in comes another one though Van der Hoekten who's on form 48 against uh, Somerset on Wednesday night but Glamorgan now under pressure in the 15th Khan comes in fuller that time that is launched into the offside to uh, long off and just a single that's the nature of the game in T20 you back up and quite often there will be run outs of that nature well you wouldn't believe that bit of luck from Shadab Khan Cameron Fletcher smashed it back down the ground Shadab Khan stuck a foot out well and eight, running Chris Cook out 87 with the bat so it's his night so far as he comes in and uh, there's no run at dot ball Imperious with the bat, Shadab Khan, here he comes, and it's launched, but the man at uh, long on should cut this off, he does, and there's a single, so as we've seen in a few cameo innings uh, by Tim Van Hoogden, he's going to go for his shots at Shadam Bowles. Cut and uh, a bit of indecision, and they do come through for another single, but they need more. 122 for four. They require 61 from 31, Glamorgan. Shut up, Khan. Bowling, another good ball, and that's just pushed to the man. Uh, cover just cuts that one off, and it's. Uh, a wicket taking over for Shadam Khan and Glamorgan in a bit of bother here after the 15th 123 for 483 the target that over really hurts Glamorgan the unfortunate run out of Chris Cook and four singles off that Shadam Khan over pushes that rate up to 12s five overs left Glamorgan need to keep finding the boundary but in Tim van der Hutten they've had a man who's found the boundary quite a lot so far in the innings he's played in the last sort of week, 10 days, two weeks or so. And he's going to try and take on Tamal Mills. Can he do it against a man? The quality of Mills, 123 for four, 60 needed off five as Mills is into bowl and Van der Hochten drives on the leg side. Doesn't time it, there's a shot. The wicket actually is well fielded at mid wicket, but the, the throw missed. 124 for four. So, Fletcher starting to uh, get going and show Welsh supporters why he's been signed as a short-term cover for Colin Ingram after just one run in his first two innings. He's on 38 not out now, but he needs to accelerate further as Mills bowls to him. It's wide outside off stump and called a wide outside the blue markings. Slower one, I think, from Mills. I could see it. Can't see his quicker ones. That, that's just flashed up on our screen at 68 mile an hour. So, with a Tamar Mills slower ball at 68 mile an hour and a quicker ball at <laughs> the high 80s, maybe touching 90 at times, it, it really is a tough prospect for, for the batsman. 125 for four, 183 needed. Mills runs towards us, left arm over and hits Fletcher on the pad as he goes to strike it on the leg side the ball trickles out on the off and they go through for a run must have been a bit of bat in there somewhere not evident from this distance up in the media centre at the Cathedral Road end it's just a shame that Glamorgan have rarely been able to put together 
a series of boundaries to, to get the crowd going. Shadab Khan certainly did that for Sussex this evening. Mills bowls and Van der Hochten hits it back to him and Fletcher this time has to turn and uh, make his ground to make sure there's no uh, repeat of the run out from a straight drive. Well, we just lost Chris Cook that way. Run out from a blow from Cameron Fletcher that uh, Shadab managed to stop with his foot, pick up and uh, flick onto the wickets. 126 for four. Just four and a half overs left to get 57 runs now. Starting to look like mission improbable as uh, Van der Hochten hooks and misses. Through it goes to Michael Burgess. And just the three runs so far in this over, four off the last over. The breaks have been well and truly put on Glamorgan. Tim van der Hochten batting up at six for only the, the second time in T20, as far as I can remember, certainly this season. As the gulls circle around the commentary box, Mills is into ball to van der Hochten, that'll be wide. Even wider that one. And Mills jogs back towards his mark. 127 for four. 56 off 26. A horrible equation, but uh, Sussex managed it in the first innings. They had uh, big overs really from 16 onwards. Mills into ball to Van der Hochten drives on the leg side. They might get two here as they turn, think, and decide against. Probably rightly, as the throw reaches Michael Burgess. 128 for four. Where have all those boundaries gone from the Welsh point of view? For Sussex viewers and listeners, this is your side putting the brakes on in style with experience of Mills and Bohapara and Shadab all playing their part. Mills in to bowl to Fletcher who gets a bit tucked up, plays it on the offside for a single. Just six off the Tamals. Mills over. The Morgan now need 54 off four. Doable but improbable. It's not the over Glamorgan wanted albeit a couple of wides from Tamal Mills only six coming off the over makes their task now that much harder Tamal Mills still has one more over to bowl out of the last four overs of the innings but required rate up at 13 and a half the Morgan batsmen really need to find some boundaries and need to find some boundaries quickly here if they're going to push Sussex all the way well Sussex were exactly in the same position 129 after 16 but then they scored 19, 13 and 15 in consecutive overs as uh, Shadab continues from the Cathedral Road end. And that is cut into the offside. Glamorgan need to get the skates on in the 17th. <laughs> Fletcher, 41 from 33, Van der Huchten just come in. Leg side field scattering. It all, yeah, deep square, deep mid-wicket, long on. Long on and long off, so they're all out anticipating Van der Huchten to go for his shots. That was on borderline. Wide, it's not given. 130 for four. 53 required in 22 balls. Shut up, Khan. Leg side, and that's going to drop, is it? He, on the boundary, and it's chucked back in and taken. I think it was Coles Ward. Ward it was again Harrison Ward who took uh, one previous and he realised he was going to step over and it would have been chalked off chucked it back in took the simple catch taken by Ward and it's another wicket 130 for 5 
It's the sort of skill, James, that uh, is routine these days, but would have been absolutely brilliant 10 years ago. It is. It's practiced all the time now, those catches on the boundary. You need to know where the rope is and practice with the rope and make sure you don't step over it. You'll even see, see them combined as well. As we see it again, Ward would have yet realised that he would have gone over the boundary. Only needed another yard that from Tim Van Houten to hit that ball for six. Incoming man, Andrew Salter. Doesn't got much time to get his eye in here. Needs to, needs to get on with his work pretty quickly. 53 from 21, Du Glamorgan can't. And uh, they go for a quick single. A direct hit would have gone. They think about a second. It was fielded by Shadab Khan at the non-strikers as uh, Salter came through for a single. So, Tim Van Huchten, the danger man, Sussex would have considered, has gone, departed. Glamorgan 131 for five, and they're running out of time. And that's uh, hit straight at the man cover. And it's just another single. The boundaries have dried up completely. So, what, 19 balls remaining. 51 required improbable almost coming impossible and uh, Salter charging down the wicket uh, through mid wicket he wanted a second but uh, in came the field and it's another wicket taking over from Sharab Khan and Sussex and they've uh, put the brakes well and truly on Glamorgan who was struggling on 133 for five yeah, Glamorgan have really struggled in the last three overs. Needing to up the run rate, it's gone completely in the wrong direction. That over going for four with a wicket. 50 required here off 18 balls and Cam Fletcher is a batsman in. Really needs to try and take the, the ball by the horns here and try and see if he can up that his strike rate and try and get Glamorgan closer, but it's a tough task from here. Welcome back to BBC Radio Wales listeners with Glamorgan needing 50 runs off the last three overs. The newcomer Cam Fletcher is 42 not out, Andrew Salter is on two and it is uh, Salter who is on strike and slicing one towards third man and he is caught. The catch, was it taken? I thought it was for a moment. I think yes, it, has, it been. has been. Salter is on his way, something of an anti-climax as he sliced it down towards third man and it was Coles who got in just in front of Ward this yeah. time so Sussex taking their uh, chances whereas Glamorgan didn't quite do so Salter goes for two and it really hasn't been his season after a, a late introduction in the competition he's taking his time to uh, leave the field Andrew Salter the umpires have come together and uh, just saying something to Ravi Papara. But no, the wicket does stand. 133 for six. It's a brilliant catch there from James Coles. Two men behind. Square on the offside inside the circle. Back of the hand slow ball from Tamal Mills. Andrew Salter going for the big shot, which he absolutely had to. Both fielders nearly colliding. But James Coles managed to hold on to what was a very good catch in the end. And Glamorgan now running out of time in this innings and they need some boundaries really quickly here if they if they can really put a charge to, to try and get try and get home and get this toll so it looks like Sussex will join Glamorgan on 10 points in the table and it's not going to be enough to give either side a chance to go through Andrew Gorvin is the new batter 22 runs for twice out in this competition as Mills bowls and Scorvin plays a nice shot down the ground for four. With mid off up in the circle, he's drilled that one up through long off. A brilliant start from Andy Gorvin. Tamar Mills going full and straight at the stumps. Andy Gorvin taking his front foot out of the way and drilling it back past the bowler and the umpire for, for four. Voice of Glamorgan's James Harris here on BBC Sport Online from BBC Sport Wales, BBC Sussex and now on BBC Radio Wales as well for these closing overs as Mills is into Gorvin again, bowls quicker and Gorvin 
slugs that one over mid-wicket and they'll pick up two runs from uh, a rather mishit shot but uh, Andrew Gorvin uh, taking his life in his hands there by tr trying to play that shot against Mills yeah there's no other way to play in this game tomorrow Mills banging it in straight at the body and the head of Andy Gorvin trying to hook him away got it high on the bat uh, but absolutely the right ploy from from Mr Gorvin he's on six after two balls, 139 for six, 15 balls left of the innings to get to 183. Wide outside off stumps, a slower, and Gorin had to wait for it and got the toe end of the bat to it. Played it to backward point for a single, 140 for six. And Glamorgan need a couple of sixes now to stay in the hunt, really. Fletcher, 42 off 34 balls, has accelerated after. Uh, a sluggish start as he steps back up from uh, club league cricket in Yorkshire to the professional circuit or full pro circuit Mills bowls and Fletcher tries to smash it through the leg side but uh, finds the man at mid wicket single taken and Fletcher's uh, fallen over at the non-strikers end not the first to do so tonight 141 for 6 then Morgan still need 42 to win and they only have 13 balls to get there so it has been Sussex's night largely thanks to Shadab Khan who hauled them out of the doldrums of 46 for 4 in the power play he contributed 87 off 53 balls and that's been the key innings of the night Mills bowls Gorvin trying to give himself room but uh, again Mills watched him departing towards leg side bowled wide of off stump Gorvin just got the end of the bat to it for a single so nine runs have come off uh, Tamal Mills is over it's 142 for six and the uh, the visitors look set to bank the points but Morgan needs something really special here 41 required off two overs some brilliant bowling from Tamal Mills brilliant change of length brilliant change of pace and in all honesty, the Glamorgan batsmen, the last four or five overs, haven't managed to get the middle of the bat on or on anything at all. And they found themselves in this position, needing something really special to, to win this game. And Sussex returned to the man that started it all, Brad Curry, who took Kieran Carlson's wicket with the very first ball. Here he comes from the Cathedral Road end that's uh, smashed. And the man, that widish. Long off will uh, hurl it back. So shut up Khan's obvious innings a factor, but also the variation in bowling. Can't Khan uh, that run out that came uh, in his over, but also uh, Ravi Bopara very economical when uh, Glamorgan struggled with uh, getting the ball off the wicket. That's uh, hit back and it's. Uh, fielded by Curry that just mid part just Glamorgan just got behind the run rate yeah they did they were falling behind and we spoke about it on air about them needing to hit some boundaries and, and keep up with that run rate all the way through but as soon as they did try they lost wickets at bad times and, and they find themselves in this position needing a, a Herculean effort 39 from the 10 balls remaining here comes Brad Curry left arm over that is uh, hit and is going to be taken and it's another wicket the man down on the long off boundary taken as had to die for it but i think he was quite comfortable in the end it's another batter to depart and he goes and goes and uh, taken by Hudson Prentice so his little cameo is at an end and Sussex sensing victory that's the fire gardens nice little innings Wendy Gorvin coming in quick 10 off 7 balls but not enough in the situation required tried to take on the fielder a long off from a short delivery from Brad Curry and only managed to hold out and I think this spells Glamorgan out of the competition unfortunately yeah. um, needed all three wins 
in the remaining three games. And even then, that might not have been enough. So Curry comes in. Three balls remaining of his over. Left arm over. That's uh, smashed. And it will not be a boundary as it's uh, cut off by Hudson Prentice. And just a single. Yeah, many factors have played a part. There were drop chances in the Sussex innings, which meant they probably got well, possibly 30, 40 more than they might have. And uh, in the mid part of their innings, Glamorgan never got going as Curry comes in. Smashed into the off field. A man at extra cover hurls it back in. There's just a single. And without the big hit in Colin Ingram as well, it's always going to be a tall order. And the injuries that have decimated Glamorgan in this competition. And just the unfortunate thing, the, the momentum that was obvious in the early part uh, is just they've just dwindled in the latter. Curry has put that bang that one in short <laughs> and uh, it misses everything and that is the end of uh, Brad Curry's over the penultimate one and De Morgan 146 for seven just limping to the end of this game and it'll be a comprehensive victory for the visitors Sussex it will unfortunately from a Glamorgan perspective Sussex fans be very happy 37 to win for Glamorgan off the final over <laughs> take a tie <laughs> <laughs> so some excellent bowling figures for Sussex Brad Curry is 3 overs 2 for 21 but their experienced guys have really stepped up the plate tonight Tamal Mills 4 overs 2 for 28 Ravi Bapara 4 overs 1 for 29 and Shadab Khan 4 overs 1 for 26 Finn Hudson Prentice to bowl the last over and uh, Fletcher drives into the offside and will take a single just as Fletcher seemed to be playing one of the two big shots he's been starved of the strike really in the last couple of overs yeah he hasn't managed to get going a huge amount tonight and certainly after him taking that six off off Ravi Bapara earlier in the piece you felt like he was ready to to really kick, in, kick his innings on but hasn't been able really to get on strike ever since Smith on strike now and uh, driving that one straight back past the stumps will pick up a couple of runs it'll be feel oh should have picked up a couple of runs Fletcher wanted to stay on strike should have been an easy two there the ball actually struck the stumps at the strikers end and uh, there was a token appeal from Michael Burgess. I'm not quite sure what was going on there. No, he felt like they should have come back for a pretty easy two, but Cam Fletcher fancied keeping the strike. See if he can get to his 50, maybe. It's on 45, not out. Four balls of the innings to go, and uh, he slams one up towards long off. One, no, no bounces just pitched outside the rope up at the far end of the ground and Fletcher reaches his maiden Glamorgan half century with a six, it's his third six 1-4 and it's taken 38 deliveries which is similar really to uh, where Shadab started from his 50 off 39 but uh, he got going afterwards and Glamorgan on 154 for seven with three balls of the innings left and that's pummeled up towards long off and over the ropes for six more just a little too late from Cameron Fletcher and from Glamorgan nice strike from Clam Fletcher hitting one into the stands over long off Finn Hudson Prentice trying to hit that wide line Yorker. Two men deep out on the offside at deep backward point and a sort of a deep cover. Cameron Fletcher walked across, got the middle of the bat on the ball and ball sailed into the seats at the tough end. 160 for seven, but just two balls left off the innings as Hudson Prentice bowls and Fletcher's launched that one up towards Long On. He may well be out. He is caught in the deep by Harrison Ward who gets underneath another one his third catch of the innings 
and uh, Cameron Fletcher goes after some late striking to demonstrate what he can do but he's gone for 57 off 40 balls and Glamorgan are 160 for 8 and uh, someone's got the joy of coming out to uh, face the last ball it's Peter Hatzoglu uh, with 23 to win Cam Fletcher trying to hit his third six in a row there trying to hit a low full toss over mid wicket managed to get under the ball too much and spoon up what was a, a pretty straightforward catch in the end to, to long on running round here we go then the last ball of the innings will be delivered by Finn Hudson Prentice from the River Taff end to new man Peter Hatzoglu who uh, scruffs it away off the inside edge down towards backwards where they'll come back for a second run as the throw comes in to Michael Burgess and Glamorgan finish on 162 for 8 in their 20 overs in comparison to Sussex's 182 for 6 and Shadab Khan dropped on 5 went on to make 87 not out of 53 balls with uh, aided and abetted by Michael Burgess 29 James Coles 20 Tom Clark 24 at the top the other Sussex contributors for Glamorgan 3 for 20 for Tim van der Hoogten in his uh, three overs Jamie McElroy got a couple Glamorgan reply well Cam Fletcher has ended up with a top score of 57 off 40 balls Sam Northeast made 44 off 30 Will Smale 25 but too much canny bowling from Sussex by too many experienced operators there James yeah, really dis disappointing evening for, for Glamorgan and Glamorgan fans. Uh, very well played for, from Sussex. Glamorgan would have felt after 10 overs of the game as though they had it in control. Had Sussex on the ropes. Saw the back of Ravi Vaparo by that point, one of the danger men. Shut up, Khan played a, a brilliant innings to wrestle the initiative back and get Sussex to a, a more than competitive score and what was a winning score at the end. Glamorgan never quite got really firing at any point. We're always slightly behind the run rate all the way through and unfortunately where they needed to kick on kept losing wickets and unfortunately missed out tonight by 21 runs feeling that uh, they let Sussex off the hook given as you mentioned the danger men departed quite cheaply 40 odd for four Papala back in the shed but shut up Khan came in but there were a few misfields as, we, as we've mentioned which with the look back that could have been the difference uh, the fielding is definitely something you can point to tonight watching the game and say that was the difference between the two teams if you look at the the final result uh, a 21 run loss from the Morgan you know the, the drop catch cost an awful lot of runs and there was also a lot of misfields there were some fumbles there was some some twos that should have been singles and there were some boundaries that should have been ones and twos and, and when you add all, all those together at the end of the night that's that's probably the difference between the two teams and you've lost the big hitters the strike hitters of Ingram Byram's gone already are they are they just one or two shy in that department that they to take the the pressure off we, we saw them in, in the mid part of their innings just finding it difficult to get Ravi Bopar off the square yeah and you've seen that with you know the fiddling and the batting order yeah. there's been a different order in a different personnel in, in positions in the last few games trying to find a solution for those problems you know you miss Eddie Byram David Lloyd Colin Ingram you know they're, they're big players and big ball strikers for Glamorgan and, and I think that's what's probably cost us in the end um, the fielding something we've got to look at as a team I think and, and look to improve because that's caused some problems I think through the through the tournament as well there's been some brilliant knocks from Colin Ingram from Chris Cook from Eddie Byram to, to see the, the guys home in certain games but but there's also been a lot of drop catches through the tournament which um, which is you know it's cost Lord Glamorgan a lot and, and the squad has been stretched before the final two championship games sandwich in uh, which uh, um, it'll start for yourself uh, Sunday against Sussex before heading down to Southampton it, it, resources have been uh, heavily knocked yeah they have um, it is tough during the summer you always know that you expect to get some injuries um, you know we've had injuries to, to key personnel at key times which, which always hurts you Strangely, it's been the batters this year. Uh, it's often the case where you lose a couple of bowlers, but um, but thankfully they've all remained fit, and long may that continue. But um, but yeah, it's going to be key <laughs> to get a couple of big players back for for Glamorgan in the next few weeks. 
There we are, Sussex victorious by 20 runs, so joy for the South Coast side's listeners, the South Coast of England that is, not so much the South Coast of Wales. Sussex get five uh, wins on the board, that's now equal to Glamorgan, both sides five from 12. And uh, these two teams meet here again in different guises, different kit and with a different colour ball. James Harris will be participating, so I hope to be interviewing him during the course of the match for... Uh, his achievements but uh, back to championship then for four days 11 o'clock Sunday with Andrew Rayburn from BBC Sussex joining me on the first two days and then Adrian Harms Edward Bevan will also be, be representing BBC Sport Wales thank you very much indeed for listening this evening hope you've enjoyed our coverage here on BBC Sport Online from Kenneth Davis James Harris and myself Nick Webb North Star